penceramah kita yang tidak asing lagi iaitu PM IR Dr Muhammad Sofi bin Kamarudin. Okey untuk pengetahuan semua, beliau merupakan auditor untuk EAC dan juga auditor untuk ITEC, okey yang mana kita panggil sebagai Engineering Accreditation Council ataupun uh, dan juga Engineering Technology Accreditation Council. Okey. Jadi uh, tanpa melengahkan masa, saya jemput PM Dr uh, IR Muhammad Sofi untuk memulakan sesi taklimat Uh, complex engineering problem uh, untuk pagi ini. Uh, kita persilakan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi uh, Let's start with umur kitab and the prayer. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Many thanks to our moderator. Oh, Chairperson Dr. Nurul Zulaili uh, and also yang saya hormati Dekan FKE Dekan Dr. Rosli Omar uh, Tim Pengurusan FKE dan sahabat-sahabat semua uh, So firstly, I would like to apologize because my lighting is not that good sebab saya punya lampu kat belakang So muka memang gentung sikit lah eh So hope you can bear with me for these two hours Okay, so today they will be sharing of uh, knowledge, okay, on the complex problem solving. Uh, man, not share screen. Ah. Okay, share screen. So since uh, we have our international friends in here, I'll try to do, deliver this using all uh, English. So hopefully you guys can understand and I can also uh, be able to deliver it in English. But campur-campur lah, eh, mix sikit. Uh, so I'm not an expert on this. Okay. Uh, it's just to happen that JKPNP invited me to give this talk and I just agree with it. I believe uh, many of you guys are better than me. Okay, we have uh, our, you know, Otai, like PM City Hour, and Seagull punya director. We have uh, Dr. Hanis, JKPNP punya pengurusi, X, uh, JKPNP punya pengurusi. And uh, we have Dr. Abul perhaps inside, ada CAD punya person, Dr. Kok, X CAD, Dr. Asma Rashid pun X CAD. So you guys can help me lah in answering the questions from our friends. Kalau saya tak boleh jawab lah. Oh, any ada uh, extra inputs yang you guys nak sampaikan? It's welcome. So along the way of my presentation, you can always uh, interrupt, ask questions, give any opinions, suggestions, or anything. Okay, because we want this uh, as our complex engineering. It's not from uh, yeah the guidelines from BEAC. But we want to uh, adapt it to our uh, environment lah. Learning kan? Teaching and learning environment. Kita punya cara macam mana. Okay. So, uh, actually complex problem solving is divided into two. The first one is complex engineering problem. And the other one is complex engineering activities. There are two, two apa nama ni, uh, elements here. Problem and also activities. <coughs> So uh, in this presentation, uh, we'll be seeing on the WK, WA, WP, EA mapping, uh, we will see what WK is, what WA is, what WP is, and what EA is later on. Uh, WP characteristics and also EA characteristics. <coughs> uh, okay, a bit of a refresher. So we have constructive alignment. I think this is uh, emphasized in our teaching and learning, where we have this OBE in loop. Okay, we have learning outcomes, instruction, and also assessment. Uh, macam mana hilangkan benda ni? Uh, so, this is the learning outcomes where we have PO, CO, and also we have apa nama domain, cognitive, psychomotor, or affective, and depending on our Bloom's taxonomy. So, in this CO, PO, uh, kita perlu buat apa nama uh, complex problem lah. Okay. So we have learning outcomes, what we want the, our students to be. 
we have the instruction on how to help them, whether student-centered learning or teacher-centered learning. And also we have assessment, how to know whether they achieve the outcomes or not in terms of uh, formative, summative assessment, direct, indirect, and also cost on program level. Apa nama assessment lah. Yang mana kita buat assessment and then kita buat CQI. Uh, so activity will match outcomes. OBE requires the other activities to be constructive line. So this is just a refresher on the BE. And this is our CQI. Uh, CQI is the heart of OBE. So this is uh, the cost level CQI that we we do every semester. Cost level CQI is 03 and then CQI is 01. The beginning of the semester, 03 in the end of the semester. Uh, we have uh, PO, uh, uh, program level punya CQI, which can be done every semester, year or full cycle. But I think in our faculty, we opt to choose uh, penama yearly program level CQI, which was which is carried out by uh, head of program lah, sepatutnya. Kan? Head of program and their teams lah, uh, consists of KPB. And we have uh, CQI at PEO level. Uh, this one full cycle punya apa nama ni lah. Uh, period. Every full cycle. Now, uh, PEO assessment models. Basically, uh, according to EAC or the board, there are three models. <coughs> Accumulated model, all courses contributes to PO measurement. So I think UTHM is uh, using this model, accumulated model, whereby all courses, regardless of uh, EPUK, co curriculum, uh, TITAS, and so on, uh, languages, mathematics, and so on, menyumbang kepada PO punya achievement. We, also, we can have as well a uh, dominating model. Selected courses only contributes to PO measurement. Uh, yang ni kemungkinan kita pilih core courses lah usually. Maksudnya kita uh, separate, asingkan yang mana uh, apa nama subjects macam bahasa umum universiti tu kan uh, is not included in the PO achievement. Okay. And lastly, culminating model. Selected few only. Selected few. Usually three to five courses or six or seven macam itulah. Three ni, of course, uh, the the three courses that is that are compulsory, apa nama IDP, internship, and also FIP. Uh, these are what compulsory, and plus maybe two or three other courses lah. So yang ni kebiasaannya, kalau sikit model yang menyumbang kepada LO, uh, sorry, PO, normally, these courses ni, dia punya assessment dia banyak. Banyak CO. Uh, banyak CO. Macam IDP kita kan, ada tujuh CO kan nanti kan. Uh, sepatutnya itu kalau guna kalau minuting model boleh lah. Kalau ada tujuh CO. Tapi because we you, we, we are using accumulated model, actually no need pun. Tapi but then I think we want our IDP uh, uh, to be maybe in equivalent with other universities katnya kan. So then kita banyak tak banyak, banyak apa, banyak CO lah. The good thing in dominating model ni, for me lah, for me kan, dominating model or culminating model ni, katakanlah, uh, at the end of the, katakan, mungkin the fourth year, ada students kita yang tak achieve uh, PO, kan? So, we can add some marks from the other courses yang kita tak ambil kira tu. But then, the other courses tu kena uh, measure, kena assess according to CO juga lah kan. Walaupun tak diambil kira tapi mereka assessment tu kena according to CO. Cumanya kalau tak cukup kita boleh ambil. But our model is all courses. So kalau tak cukup maksudnya ada students tak cukup PO nak graduate uh, then the faculty has to think how to you know increase the marks lah. Sebab semua kursus dah ambil kira kan. Then there are talks on the COCO apa nama on the committee dan sebagainya lah. But then, ada assessment ke kat situ? Tak tahu. Okay. So now, all this uh, Washington Accord thing, apa nama, compact engineering thing adalah semuanya berpuca ataupun dia punya orang kata macam mana eh. Uh, the source of all these things, dia kerja akar semua bawah IEA agreements. International Engineering Alliance. So I just want you to make you aware. So let's see apa nama uh this document sekejap uh lama lambat pula 
Okay, in this education accord, we have Washington accord, Sydney accord, and also uh, W accord. Okay, uh, this is this is the document. So inilah orang kata kitab puncanya yang 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 EAC rujuk refer, even EAC refer. So if we can apa nama baca and digest bit kan benda ni kan. So then kita boleh uh, bukan nak lawan EAC tapi kefahaman kita kemungkinan boleh sama dengan EAC lah. Kalau if we look in this documents, uh, you see here. Uh, so it explains on the range of problem solving. It explains on the complexities and also uh, uh, knowledge profile and also the apa nama graduate attributes. So kalau kita perasan, this knowledge attribute ni semua adalah PO. This is PO1 from EAC. EAC even copy word by word daripada IEA ni. Kan? So this is PO2, problem analysis. This is the statement of PO number two in the EAC standard. This is investigation, PO4. So meaning even EAC pun ambil daripada dokumen ni lah. Kan? So uh, this good to, 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 to refer to this document as well lah. Uh, so IEA is governing all the accords semua ni. Uh, so Washington Accord, uh, ignore the Sydney and also Dublin Accord lah. Yeah, Sydney Accord is for engineering technologist, whereas uh, apa nama Dublin Accord is for engineering technicians. So we are here engineers. So Washington Accord is to assist the mobility of professional engineers. So if we are professional engineer in uh, Malaysia, we can be professional engineer as well in the UK in the Australia to all the signatories lah. Okay. And the Washington Accord, of course, apa nama, sekejap. Focus on academic programs lah. Alright. Uh, so just to show you, so the red countries here are the founder or the pioneer, 1989, are the enam countries. So we are here, Malaysia, 2009, we joined them, Washington Accord. And there are countries coming in, Bangladesh, uh, Indonesia, Thailand, Myanmar, and so on. So, in Washington Accord, professional Indian grades are expected to work with complex Indian problems. So now comes the complex word. For Asian technologists, they have to work with broadly defined and technician well defined. So let's focus on this one also, only for Washington Accord graduates. So we have to have complex Indian problems. Orang tanya saya, people ask me, do we really need to address complex? Kan? I mean, okay, let's think about it. Eh? Kalau kita tak address complex, if we do not address complex, then our curriculum might fall, might fall into broadly defined. So then our graduates bukan engineers, our graduates are not engineers, our graduates are engineering technologists perhaps, or even worse, the problems that we give to the students might fall into just well defined, technician level saja. So how can they compete with other, you know, graduates from other universities during interviews perhaps, kan? So, nak tak nak, we have to try. We have to try. We have to try to deliver the complex general problem ni. Tak banyak orang kata, orang kata apa? Uh, kalau nak tinggal tu, jangan tinggal semua. Ha, macam tu lah kan? Ha, buat sikit-sikit lah. Alright? Okay. Now, these are the terminologies that we have to, I mean, whether you like it or not, benda ni yang kita akan jumpa lah. Kan? WP, EA, it's not only in this presentation, but I think in the program ke kan. Uh, for now, I think maybe the KJ and the quarter program and the KPB mungkin aware lah kan. But now, uh, akan ada cycle yang mana kita orang lain akan jadi KJ, orang lain akan jadi KP, orang lain akan jadi KPB. It's not us anymore kan. So kalau you ada prior knowledge or prior you know experience ke dalam in this terminologies perhaps so it speed up your apa nama uh, tugas lah your job lah kan as a head of program nanti kan so WP we we will be referring WP as complex problem solving W is for Washington eh Washington Washington meaning that for engineering lah complex lah Washington P is problem EA engineering activities WA, A is attributes. So W is Washington, meaning that it is graduate attributes, attributes for engineers, which are PO. So actually, program outcome kita tu apa? Uh, program outcome is, is just uh, attributes of an engineer. 
So the student has to achieve all this program outcome so that uh, they are acknowledged as the engineers. Lah, kan? So a student tu kena tahu, kita cuba begitu kat students, PO ni apa? PO ni attributes of engineers. Lah. Okay. Uh, and also we have WK, K is for knowledge, W is for Washington again. Lah. So knowledge profile for engineers. Now, kita lihat yang kat sini. Ni saya pergi cepat sikit because semua orang uh, dah tahu sikit lah. Alright. So belum masuk kompleks lagi. Uh, this is because we have only two hours. I don't know whether it's enough. Hopefully apa nama cukup lah. See, in IEA punya dokumen tadi yang saya tunjuk uh, sepintas lalu saja tadi, we have 12 WA or 12 graduate attributes. So these attributes are actually our PLO ataupun PO lah. Saya guna PO because uh, I'm, I'm using apa AC punya ni senang. PO. So the PO1 is knowledge, PO2 problem analysis until PO12 lifelong learning. Meaning these are the attributes of an engineer. Eh, okay. Uh, meaning our students should be should have no engineer knowledge. Our students should be able to analyze the problem. Our students should be able to investigate. Our should our students should be able to communicate. And our students should have no problem in work individually or in a team. So all these are attributes of an engineer. Okay, now let's see on the statements of each. PO1. Kalau kita tengok kat sini, if you look closely, I highlighted in red here. PO1, we have complex engineering problems. I won't read apa nama semula word by word, okay? PO2, we have complex engineering problems. PO3, also the design solution for complex engineering problems. PO4, complex engineering problems. PO5, complex engineering problems. So banyak complex engineering problem up until PO7. So, this is important, okay? Because we uh, we ask the student to design. We ask the student to design or we ask the student to investigate perhaps. But the problem that we are giving the students, if they are not complex problem, meaning that their investigation is not up to the level required by the ECOT, by the Washington ECOT, okay? We are giving student normal problems and ask them to use the modern to usage. So meaning that the uh, apa nama uh, application of modern to usage ni okay apply kan application of modern to usage ni not up to the complex problem lah kan so then macam mana student kita nak have the ability as an engineers so this is why it is important for us to deliver complex problem so that when they analyze the problem meaning they analyze the complex problem it's not a simple problem it's not a well defined problem bukan macam tu okay so Inilah yang pentingnya problem ni sebenarnya. Ha. And I want to apa nama uh, tak perhatian you. WPO10 communication sini sahaja yang disebutkan complex engineering activities. Okeylah saya terus jam sikit yang ini. So kalau subject you if your subject has PO10 then you can deliver complex engineering activities punya apa nama a uh, problem ke whatever lah kan, complex activity element. Kalau tak ada PO10, according to AC lah, no need, no need. Okay, only PO10 saja. Okay, so now keep problems to to your other side. So kita lihat yang biru-biru ni, yang biru-biru ni. So these are all the knowledge profile, WK is knowledge. PO1 is related to knowledge profile number one to number four. PO2 Number one to number four. PO3 design is related to knowledge profile number five. PO4, number eight, and so on up until PO8 lah, ethics kan. So these are the knowledge profile uh, sepatutnya should be delivered to our engineering graduates. But then what WK1 is, what WK2 ni semua ni apa benda ni kan. Okay, kita lihat. Now. What is WK1? It is the knowledge on the natural sciences. WK2, the knowledge on the mathematics. I mean, this is the apa nama statement lah, dia punya uh, brief description on what engineering fundamentals is, what special knowledge is dan sebagainya lah. And so WK4, specialist knowledge. Engineering fundamentals ni mungkin apa nama macam KVL, KCL, kecuali voltage law kan. Apa nama mesh analysis dan sebagainya. 
specialist specialist ha uh, tahu knowledge ni mungkin i don't know medical electronics very specialized high voltage perhaps uh, drives kan so ah uh, so specialist knowledge lah alright for me and wk5 is the knowledge on the engineering design wk6 any practice okay so all this knowledge all these wk's are related to the specific po let's say ah ada tanya ke saya dengar suara tadi tak ada alright so wk5 design wk6 practice kan kita lihat eh saya kembali semula slide tadi wk5 tadi engineering design kan dia memang related dengan po design okay wk6 engineering practice dia memang related dengan modern to usage lah, practice lah kan, so these are all actually related lah so this is the knowledge lah, okay kenapa yang ni tak ada? kan, ha, saya tanya dulu lah sebelum you all tanya katanya kan PO9, 10, 11, 12 tak ada? Ha, nantilah saya cerita sekejap lagi along the way now, okay so kalau kita plot, kalau kita keluarkan this WK, WK ni semua kita dah tahu yang merah-merah ni semua problem, 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 problem and then yang biru-biru ni semua WK kan kalau kita keluarkan WK ni semua dalam bentuk mapping so kita ada yang macam ni this is Washington ignore this uh, middle column ni this is for Sydney and this is for apa nama Dublin sorry ya yes, sebab ni itu hari saya bagi taklimat kepada universiti apa eh tak berapa jaya kot saya rasa so I have to include all these two kan so just let's focus on this one engineering So PO1 very related to WK1 to WK4. WK1 apa? Knowledge on profile 1 which is natural sciences. WK2 benda lah mathematics. WK3 engineering fundamental segaknya kan. WK4 specialist knowledge. So dia PO1. PO3 yang ni. So yang ni saya keluarkan. Dan yang mana ada disebutkan engineering problem. Macam ni complex problem. Complex problem, problem yang ni saya keluarkan as WP yang gini. Yang ni. So now kita dapat lihat. PO yang attach kepada WK is up to PO8. And PO yang attach dengan complex problem up to PO7. So now as if nampak macam PO1 sampai PO7 je lah yang kena address complex problem kan. Yes. You got the idea. Tapi not 100% true lah. You got the idea. Dan juga untuk engineering activities cuma PO10 je lah yang kena deliver. Yes. That's correct. Okay. So now you got the idea. Sebelum tu kita lihat semula. Lihat lagi sikit. Now kita lihat apakah requirement complex problem. Ini disebutkan dalam Alah tak nampak lah. Ha. So it's So exit ni lah. Ha, nampak macam ni eh? boleh eh? sikit eh. Sebab ada kacau atas tu lah. Complex engineering problems have characteristics WP1 and some or all of WP2 to WP7. So WP1 ni compulsory wajib. Okay wajib. So kita, kita lihat WP1 je dulu. You ignore the other WP2 sampai 7 ni. Jangan tengok dulu. Tengok WP1 dulu. So meaning that We, if we do not have WP1, tak perlu buat any problems. Oh, it is not an engineering, uh, sorry, it, it is not a complex problem. Okay? Kena ada WP1, then we can deliver complex problem, but with some or all of WP2 to WP7. Some ni bermaksud apa? What is the meaning of some? Sedikit. It's not one, but two. The minimum is two. Minimum is two. So, you have to choose any two from WP2, 3, 4, 5. Might be WP1 and WP2 and WP4. Or WP1 and WP3 and WP5. Or even 3. WP1 and WP2, 3 and 7. Mana-mana. But WP1 is compulsory. So let's look on the WP1 first. What is WP1? It is uh, the types of problem for one cannot be resolved without in-depth engineering knowledge at the level of one or more. One or more of WK3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. Again, 3, 5, sorry, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. There is no WK7. 
there is no WK 1 and 2. So, knowledge that is required to apa nama to solve lah, complex linear problems is WQ3, 4, 5, 6 and 8. So, so WQ7 tak perlu sebenarnya. Because if you have WQ7, dia tak cukup. Okay, to solve the linear problems. Meaning that daripada sini, kita leave up yang ni dulu eh. So, I will come back to this later, WQ2 sampai WQ7 ni. Daripada tadi yang kita ada tu, now, kita cuma dia kata cuma nak 3, 4, 5, 6 and 8. 3, 4 memang dah dalam dunia lah kan. So WK1 dah termasuk sekali lah maksudnya. This one WK1 sampai 4. 3, 4, 5, 6 and 8. 7 tak masuk. 7 tak masuk. Walaupun ada literis kat situ complex engineering problem. Okay so based on this apa nama uh, definition. So kita boleh conclude kat sini. If your course that if the course that you are teaching apa nama have PO1 either PO1 2 3 or 4 or 5 salah satu saja okey salah satu saja because why sebab dia kata dekat sini one or more of WK3 4 5 6 or 8 one or more ada satu je so meaning you Nak kata shoot ke tak tahulah kan. Depending on the faculty lah nak wajibkan ke tidak. But you you can deliver complex engineering problem. What about the cost that doesn't have PO 1 sampai 5? Might be the cost that you are teaching is uh, the PO ataupun the CLO is mapped to PO 7, 9 and 11. Tak perlu lah tak payah. Tak payah senang cerita. So kalau you punya cost, uh, back CO tu ada CO1 to CO5, uh, sorry PO1 to PO5, then you should, ataupun you you can lah kan, boleh deliver complex engineering problems. Ha, tengok dekat cost dulu. Okay. okay, balik semula kepada saya ni. So kalau tak ada dalam ni, uh, sorry. Kalau your apa nama cost tu is not from PO1 to PO5 then uh, tak payah buat any problem. You can ask TDA, you can show TDA, TDA my cost is not uh, mapped to PO1 until PO5 so I don't have to deliver complex problem. So TDA kena accept lah kan. And then kalau dia nak buat juga kena buat revision ke curriculum lah map kepada PO1 to PO5 lah. Okay so so kalau kita dah comply dengan WP1 so then, the problem in terms of assignment, in terms of projects perhaps, so that problem is going to consist of at least two from WP2 to WP7. So the problem might have depth of analysis required, contohnya. And the other one is familiarity of issues where, whereby it is infrequently encountered issues, special issues. Kan? Ah, kalau dah Dapat dua ni pun, dah cukup lah. It is a complex problem. Uh, so that's why sebenarnya, for me, we are doing this sebenarnya. Dah lama kita buat. Dah lama kita buat. Kan? Daripada dulu memang kita bagi problem yang macam mana. Kita bagi problem yang macam ni lah. Range of conflicting requirements. Meaning that you give problem tu, ada banyak requirement yang you bagi. Contohnya requirement dia kena, efficiency kena more than 90%, but the cost is less than $10 and then apa nama use recycle items those are the requirements kan so ada WP2 cuma kita tak record it properly lah kan sebab kita belum ada awareness pasal benda ni kan okay so uh, saya tinggalkan ni okay so you pilih dua saja daripada sini so we will be seeing on this uh, much more detail later on okay so but the idea is the awareness is firstly if your cost it's mapped to PO1 until PO5, either one lah, either one, yang mana-mana satu lah, kan. Then, kalau boleh buat lah, kan. I mean, let's focus on, I don't know, it depend on the faculty lah kan, nak fokus, kalau mungkin tahun satu tu tak perlu lah because uh, electric circuit one kan, memang ada PO1 kan, but then electric circuit one pun, kalau nak deliver complex, 
those are fundamental courses kan fundamental courses ni i don't know lah kan macam mana kita nak buat for me tak perlulah deliver complete kita focus on mungkin study on fourth year agaknya kan to deliver this so this is the awareness dulu yang kita nak staff tahu okay so all right so now saya akan tunjuk nanti dah satu contoh macam mana uh, kita nak buat untuk deliver this complex problem. Kenapa? Why? Why or why? Only five PO saja yang complex problem. Kalau kita, if we see here, there are like three groups of PO. Yang ni, dia group yang ini. PO 1 sampai PO 5. Okay. And then, this is another group. 678 ni sebelah. Because all these three are attached to WK7 kan? and then kita ada yang macam ni yang tak ada apa-apa knowledge profile tak ada complex problem kan? yes the PO is divided into three groups sebenarnya so ok uh, let's uh, kita tengok mapping semula yang tadi PO to WK jadi WK to PO benda yang sama saja so WK1 to WK4 again WK1 is natural sciences WK2 mathematics This one engineering fundamentals and this one engineering specialist knowledge. So this one map to WPO1 and PO2. WK5 engine design is mapped to PO3 design. WK6 engineering practice is mapped to modern tools usage PO5. WK7 comprehension of engineering in society. So it is mapped to 6, 7 and 8. I didn't put uh, red in color because It's not the these three POs are not required in the uh, penama complex problem. And we have WK8 research literature, which is PO4 investigation. I mean, in order for the students to investigate, they have to carry out a literature, research literature. Bau boleh investigate. Ah, maksudnya tengok journal, tengok apa benda previous works, apa nama catalogs, kan? Technical data sheet, whatever lah, kan? Ha, kena, then they are able to investigate. So from all this apa nama uh, PO, kita ada this PO1 to PO12. PO1 to PO5, they are analysis of problems and synthesis of solutions. PO6 to PO8, these are responsibilities of engineers. And PO9 to PO12, it is a skill set, apa nama skill set required in workplace. Teamwork, communication, project management and lifelong learning. So, kita ada group-group of PO ni. So, that is why complex engineering problems with apa nama focus on PO1 to PO5. Courses with PO1 to PO5 because this apa nama group of POs There are analysis of problems and synthesis of solutions. So, analysis of problems meaning for W uh, Washington, it is complex engineering problem. For Sydney, broadly defined and so on lah kan. Uh, but we are complex engineering problem. Okay. Uh, hey, saya tak tapi ni. Okay, uh, up to that, kita dah ada awareness. So, for today ni kita nak bagi awareness dulu. Bukan nak, nak bagi semua orang pandai tiba-tiba kan. I, I myself pun tak pandai nak buat complex ini problem ni. Kita nak bagi awareness dulu. Macam, I mean we have session with Prof Wong and also Prof Zainal Abidin, our SNS examiners. Prof Wong is SNS examiner for BEJ and Prof Zainal Abidin is the SNS examiner for BEV. So, they both agree that for this time at the moment all the IPTA actually should have awareness dulu complex engineering problem ni macam dulu-dululah where we apa nama uh, nak laksanakan OBE kan semua kena ada OBE awareness on OBE 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 how what is OBE how to deliver OBE why OBE semua ni so at this moment apa nama kita nak ada awareness dulu uh, why kena ada complex kan what is complex engineering problems and how to do complex for 
maybe small punya assignment dulu lah kan we start small but we will be finishing big it's good so again here W complex in problems tadi WP1 is compulsory so WP1 is related to the PO okay WP1 is related to the WK tadi WK3 4 5 6 and 8 and it is related to the PO so kalau ada PO tu kena WP1 buat kalau PO tak kena no need ha. so WP1 ni orang kata memang PO je lah kan and sum or all of WP2 3 4 5 6 and 7 okay So in this slide kita see a bit detail sikit lah what is WP2 what WP2 is what WP3 is and and what WP6 dan sebagainya okey Maaf Datuk right. Sri saya yeah. nak cerah sikit uh, ada soalan boleh. daripada ha, boleh. peserta jadi kita nak tanya sekarang atau kita tunggu di penghujung sesi uh, tak kisahlah tanya sekarang boleh Uh, tak kisah sebab kita nampak dekat bahagian chat ada soalannya sebab tadi Dr. Sofia ada sebut mengenai PLO kan jadinya ha. dalam PP ada PLO yang itu ke yang Dr. Sofia maksudkan dalam apa? dalam RPP ada PLO ok dalam RPP ada CO cost learning outcome ok dalam RPP ada CO cost outcome sekejap eh ah ni alamak ai This one, ada cost outcome. Okay, semua cost tu, outcome tu, dia map kepada PLO. Directly, directly mapping, directly map kepada PLO. Meaning that, if we, apa nama, measure this cost outcome, dia akan bagi measure PO student tu untuk yang itu. Cuma, PO students ni, dia ada contribution daripada banyak kosos, banyak kosos, banyak kos. Contoh PO1 sahaja might be 30 cost yang menyumbang kepada achievement of PO1. ECU1, PO, uh, CO dia menyumbang kepada PO1, apa nama DSP kemungkinan ada CO1 dia menyumbang kepada PO1 lah macam tu lah. So kalau you nak kata CO tu as part of PO, ah, macam tu lah bunyi dia. Okay, Lily kalau ada yang lain? Hopefully menjawab. Um, ada lagi satu soalan daripada boleh, boleh. Is there any difference between complex engineering problem and complex problem? Uh, if so, what's that? Uh, itu lah. je. Ada lah. Yeah. Engineering lah. <laughs> okay, ada. Yes, yes. We have to deliver complex engineering problem. Uh, we have to focus on engineering because apa nama, otherwise, I mean complex problem might be uh, 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 macam mana nak cakap. Uh, mungkin in terms of Uh, kalau you are, you are an artist, you are an artist kan, and then someone see, oh this drawing is complex lah. So is it engineering? I don't know lah kan, sebab saya pun tak ada, <laughs> tak ada bakat kan. But that one is complex problem for them. But maybe for us, it's not an engineering problem kan. Arti color ni, color ni, color ni and then you you ada apa nama, tengok daripada mata sendiri kan. But for us, it is for engineering problem lah. Okay, so but the difference i i mean saya pun tak boleh nak orang kata uh, orang kata apa nama uh, black and white kan lah but then to 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 be able to address complex engineering problem to solve that problem we should require these types of knowledge kalau nak solve problems tu kena ada engineering fundamentals kena ada uh, you have to have engineering fundamentals you have to have special knowledge Right, either of this knowledge that require to solve the problem, then we can say it is complex engineering problem because it is stated here, complex engineering problems have characteristics of WP1. So WP1, the knowledge required to solve the problem is WK3, 4, 5, 6 and or 8. Okay. So perhaps kalau tadi tu saya contoh saya painting tadi tu, kan? tak perlukan engineering fundamentals pun specialist engineering ni is special engineering knowledge lah kan engineering knowledge pun so might be yang itu bukan complex engineering problem tak it is just another complex problem sebenarnya okey lili jangan proceed yes you may yo Uh, yes, yes, you may start. You may proceed. Okay, okay, thank you. All right. 
Alright. Okay now, uh, let's go into this uh, a bit a bit details lah, bukan detail sangat. So WP1, uh, we all know WP1 is attached to the WK or PO actually. So basically WP1 is what is WP1? It is PO1 to PO5. Macam tu lah. Kalau ada, then you ada. Uh, range WP2, range of conflicting requirement. So from WP2 to WP7, you choose two. Nak choose semua pun boleh. Tak ada masalah. So itu yang orang kata, what's the difference? How to differentiate whether this problem is more complex to the other one? For me lah, perhaps, perhaps, okay, perhaps. Kalau you punya problem is WP1, WP2 and WP4. And Dr. maybe Dr. Erwan punya problem is WP1, WP3 and WP4. The complexity is different, but it is at the same level. Same level. Kenapa? Because we have WP1 and two of this WP2 to WP7 saja. But then, mungkin Dr. Zulaili has dia punya problem. Yang mana map kepada WP1, WP2, WP3, WP4, 5 and WP6. Ada empat. Uh, so then maybe that problem is more complex than my problem yang hanya map kepada WP1, WP2 and WP3. Dan juga lebih kompleks daripada mungkin Dr. Erwan tadi, WP1, WP4 and WP5 only. Sebab Dr. Lily ada empat mapping tu. Uh, contoh itu yang kita boleh sebutlah kalau you nak differentiate the complexity lah kan of the problems kan. Okay, so what WP2 is? Conf range of conflicting requirements. Uh, so involve wide ranging or conflicting technical engineering and other issues. So kalau problem tu ada uh, conflicting demands in the developing uh, design, what constraints are placed to resolve the problem, you ada letakkan requirement. So that might uh, comply to WP2. Okay how the constraints were identified and so on. So, it's student kena fikir sikit. WP3, depth of analysis required. So, most likely kita punya problem banyak jatuh dalam WP3 lah. Have no obvious solution and require abstract thinking, originality in analysis to formulate suitable models. So, yang ini just cadangan. It's not apa nama bukannya kitab yang this is guideline, cadangan saja. Mungkin you ada ada justification untuk comply dengan depth of analysis. So what guidance constraint given to develop the design? Perhaps it has multiple solutions. So to 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 achieve multiple solution mungkin ada beberapa depth of analysis required. How was the problem defined? Students may have been given clear boundaries, specific details or what they have to do or they may have to define some or all of the boundaries kan. So they decide okay. So depth of analysis required. Kalau kita problem kita ada require deep analysis might fall into WP3. Familiarity of issues. So the problem involve infrequently encountered issues. Now, to what extent is this problem routinely encountered or resolved using well understood practices? The, so yang ini kita ada beberapa orang kata uh, nak kata cadangan lah. Okay. Whether it is a new problem, of course lah kalau new problem memang infrequently encountered issues lah not previous or only rarely encountered to the students eh to the students or it might be a familiar problem with either clearly defined methods or practices used to resolve maksudnya macam ni the methods ni sendiri yang unfamiliar okay maksudnya we have a familiar problem so usually the problem is solved using method a kan method A. So, these students are familiar with this. But now, we are giving the same problem, but we ask the student to solve using method B that we introduce. Kita beritahu kat dia, okay, this, the industry sebenarnya guna method B ni, yang mana kita tak ada dalam buku. So, they, that is unfamiliar. They are unfamiliar with that method. Although, they are familiar with the problem. So, that can be one, can be can fall into WP4. Or maybe the, the familiar problem, Tapi dengan beberapa unit issues that make the resolution difficulty level increases lah. Alright. WP5, extent of applicable codes are outside problems. So problem number five, type five is outside problems encompassed by standards and codes of practice for professional engineering. So uh, perhaps uh, the problem apply engineering skills to address some parts of the problem that were not clearly prescribed by standards codes and practice. Contoh, 
uh, in designing apa nama a uh, a uh, lightning protection system sorry ah Cont- my contoh dalam bidang power sikit lightning protection system kan yeah. to design lightning protection system is not simply you put apa nama search resistor satu ke atas bumbung and then dah kan yeah. tak ada so dia kena tengok standard kita tengok standard berapa jarak dia dia kena kira macam-macam kan yeah. so if there is some part that is not clear sebab standard ni kadang-kadang biasa dia bagi in general kan contoh dia pun kalau dia bagi structure if they have a, they give a structure kan untuk lightning protection system tu structure dia tu untuk petak aje kan untuk petak aje simple lepas tu dia tunjuklah but our structure macam mana our structure gini rumah kita ada naik turun bumbung semua kan macam mana nak buat ni ha, so gunakan standard juga the codes but then we have to think lah macam macam mana nak apply the codes into our uh, solution So maybe ada a triple E codes I think I of course you ada microwave ke apa nama radio frequency codes kan electronics punya kan whatever code memang you gunalah. So yang ini juga orang kata it's good lah kalau kita masukkan those standard tu ataupun those codes tu dalam kita punya reference in our reference in RPP or syllabus. I would really really welcome that or even I would urge that lah to include in the in the list of reference the codes that is related to the course that we are teaching wp6 extent of stakeholder okay uh, okay dr safi hmm. interact sikit eh uh, hmm. ada yang bertanya dr fahlan ni tanya apa perbezaan antara wp dengan ea ada question yang kedua Tadi berkenaan dengan WP4 yang familiar with the issue tu kan, okay, WP4 tu uh, Kalau method tu ada dalam buku tapi tidak diajar dalam lecture Bolehkah kita kategorikan sebagai um, uh, dia tak familiar dengan uh, apa, pro, apa okay. dengan Alright uh, Okay, WP dan EA kita belum sampai Kita akan, saya akan, I'll be explaining on EA later on Okay, for now kita nak problem ni dulu, okay Ah, kalau EA memang kena buat jugalah tapi kalau audit tu biasanya dia tengok kompleks problem dulu WP tu dulu problem EA kita akan tengok nanti you, then you will know the difference ok ah, untuk WP4 ni ah, dia sebenarnya ah, if frequently encounter issues ataupun unfamiliar methods atau even unfamiliar familiar problem ni dia tak pernah jumpa sepanjang program tu Dapat contoh eh, if you are teaching third year, the method has not been taught in year three, year two and year one. Walaupun ada dalam buku, then boleh. But then, kalau you kata that method is not taught in my course, buku tu, dalam RPP tak perlu ajar, but then, dia pernah belajar masa year two and year one. Then it is not unfamiliar. Ah. Uh. So kalau walaupun dalam buku tapi dia tak pernah belajar in year 2 and year 1 uh, then boleh lah for me it is unfamiliar to them alright tapi kalau dia pernah belajar then it's not unfamiliar maksud fam- dah lah problem tu kita bagi familiar kan and then the method pun oh dah pernah buat dulu ni uh, so tak boleh lah uh, ok ok boleh eh so WP6. Okay, we continue with WP6. Ada stakeholder involvement. So, yang ini lebih kepada, I would say, problem that you require to have a survey, interview orang kampung, interview net chancellor, interview the, apa nama, mak ayah, interview pakcik cleaner, interview all the, apa nama, tukang kebun ke, driver bus ke, kan. Uh, so, semua tu ada stakeholders kan ha, yang 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 dekat dengan kita lah yang dekat dengan students lah kan so macam mana requirement requirement stakeholders ni impact on the solution of the problems kan so if you have this then you have apa nama WP6 lah and lastly WP7 uh, nak explain tu saya pun tak apa <laughs> yalah ni high level sikit so the problem is Uh, it is uh, problems including many components, parts or sub problems. The problem is able to be broken down into smaller components or sub problems. Not physically, but 
mathematically if physically and mathematically boleh okey tapi kena ada mathematical contoh eh what eh ah uh, okey maybe the wireless power transfer you transmit the power is one thing kan where you apa nama uh, you calculate the loss calculate the voltage drop and then we transmit uh in very high voltage but with low current to 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 reduce the loss but then it is wireless how can you do that kan okay so ada benda lain pula ada parts lain yang kena kita consider dalam apa nama the whole project tu kan the whole equations kan uh, so macam tu lah lebih kurang macam tu lah so ada uh, apa nama high, high level problems lah so this problem might be apa nama might have longer punya period of i don't know untuk solve the question di di di, di apa nama question lah Okay, so uh, so now that's the essence of WP. Okay, from WP1 to WP7. Okay, yang mana WP1 is uh, of course from the PO, WP2 to WP7 and you choose minimum to. Senang cerita untuk buat kerja senang, pilih dua, jangan pilih banyak-banyak. Okay, <laughs> but depends on you lah kan, because you are the expert in your field, in your course. Okay, okay now, so... Let's see a typical design process and example. In the design process, firstly we define the problem. So the student have to define the problem, analyze, and then the student have to gather information. To 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 so, saya nampak proses ni pun tak. It's not very much different to PBL. Actually, PBL can be complex problem juga, tak ada masalah. PBL, PO PBL, whatever yang kita dah laksanakan selama ni kan, eh. So you have to gather information. Kalau PBL ni saya rasa fila table tu kan kan. So I think Dr. T is very good in fila table. <laughs> Just give information. Uh, from the information. So maybe there are possible solutions. So brainstorming semuanya kan. Ada multiple solutions yang 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 boleh dipilih. And then from that kita analyze and select one solution that is i think most likely to solve the problem so when we have chose this when the student have chosen the solution so they have to test and implement the solution and to see whether the effectiveness of that solution okay now this is the typical design process so let's see a uh, 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 an example here problem definition Certain rodents such as common mouse and carrier are carriers and transmitters of an often fatal virus, which is called coronavirus. Oh, can hanta virus. Conventional mouse traps expose people to this virus as they handle the trap and dispose the mouse. Design a mouse trap that allows a person to trap and dispose of a mouse without being exposed to any bacterial or viral agents being carried on the mouse. So, in this problem, kita letakkan sekali criteria for success of a better mousetrap. So, might be yang ini semua adalah sama ada diberi oleh kita from us or we ask the students to list out what is the criteria contohnya. So, kalau ada criteria macam ni, this might comply to WP2 range of conflicting requirements. Okay, so kat sini dah ada element WP2. And then, step two, get the information. So, and the students start to asking questions, start to ask questions. What are the existing solutions? What is wrong with the way the problem is currently being solved? Or what is the right with the way the problem is currently being solved? Kan? Mungkin yang ni dia nak gunakan. What companies? So, there are banyak soalan. So, this might fall into familiarity of issues. Mungkin dia tak tahu pun, tak, tak, tak pernah jumpa benda ni kan. So this is the, the question that they have to answer. Tak pernah lah lagi apa nama uh, companies mana yang ada economic factors apa benda ni kan. So in solving these questions, it might involve extent of stakeholder involvement. Stakeholders perhaps. And then kemungkinan dalam ni juga ada WP2, range of conflicting requirements perhaps. Kan? So kita ada tiga WP kat sini. Tapi kalau you rasa banyaklah WP246 pilih satu je lah, WP6 sajalah. Okey, tak ada masalah. Stakeholder. So kena tanya lah. 
Maksudnya kena interview orang-orang penangkap-penangkap tikus kat rumah ni semua kan. Ha, kena, you have to interview the manufacturer, you have to interview the consumer, you have to interview the apa nama, pekedai, seller kan, yang jual kan, apa benda ni semua kan. Ha, so, mungkin okay, LPC semua dah cukup, tak perlu banyak. Because why? Kita dah ada LP2 kat sini. So, tak cukup lah dua. But just to show you, so I list this all out. And then step three, generate multiple solutions. Ah, so nak generate multiple solution, perhaps kena ada depth of analysis juga lah, uh, kan? So kena fikir, kena brainstorming. So so this is the come this come the importance of teamwork, kan? Masing-masing kena fikir creative solutions ke, kan? So dia bukan nyari idea saja, but solutions as well, kan? So macam kalau idea ni macam mana solution dia? Idea B macam solution dia. Idea C macam solution dia. So maybe there lah three possible solutions perhaps. So this might comply to WP3 depth of analysis. And then analyze and select a solution. So yang ini kita ada mungkin depth of analysis. Kena ada knowledge. Of course lah kalau nak analyze and select a solution ni dah macam judgment eh. Dah macam judgment. Kena ada depth of knowledge sikit lah. Kan? Eh might be you have to you have to apa nama uh, select a solution that complies to the standard tak boleh suka-suka ikut solution contoh seorang bagi solution sembur racun kan poison fogging fogging tu letak poison habis semua tikus but then it is unethical tak boleh kan so tak boleh lah uh, so might be uh, it is not according to the standard. Kita ada SOP, standard procedure. Ah, standard procedure ke macam ni. Ah, so then the student might have to refer to WP5. So then WP5 might come into play. Alright. And also ada depth analysis lah. Sebab ada analyze ni kan. Depth analysis lah. In order to analyze, may, the requirement may have to have uh, I say the student have to have knowledge lah, of course. And then lastly uh, to test and implement perhaps Uh, to test atau implement tu dia ada method method yang sudah dinyatakan dalam standard perhaps kan dia ada method yang sudah dinyatakan dalam standard so ada WP5 kalau tak ada standard what if there is no standard to implement dia tak ada lah no WP5 lah macam tu je jangan susahkan diri kita nak oh ni nak kena ada nak kena ada no so it's open kalau tak ada tak ada because kita dah ada previously we have WP5 here, WP3 here, we have WP3, we have WP6 perhaps. So dah banyak dah, dah comply. WP2 dah ada kan. So I mean kenapa kita nak tambah-tambah lagi kan. Kenapa, why do you want to make yourself very hard. Kenapa nak susahkan student lagi tak. No. Kita nak start small dulu. So but to show an example, saya kena letak banyak lah WP. Kan. Okay. Uh, okay. Setakat tu, complex engineering problem. Sedikit info berkenaan complex engineering problem. Now kita masuk complex engineering activities. Uh, so sebelum tu, kalau ada persoalan, dipersilakan. Kalau tak ada, uh, kita boleh ambil satu dua minit lah untuk digest sebelum masuk kepada problem. One thing eh yang saya nak beritahu eh. kita mungkin bagi we might give the students to do a uh, few beberapa kerja contoh eh uh, in their presentation contoh bila mereka present so student uh, kita mungkin boleh nilai dia communication the contents of what being presented di uh, professionalism contohnya pakai baju tak pakai uh, pakai baju tak pakai baju pula pakai net tie tak pakai net tie baju cantik ke tak cantik kan now whether they are in engineer punya attire or not kan so i mean kita tak perlu nilai semua we don't have to assess all those things i mean if we give some problem or assignment to the student and they have to apa nama to to present we can only Assess communication saja. Yang content tak perlu. Pun tak apa. Ha. Mungkin kita dah nilai dalam report. Okay. 
Begitu juga kalau kita make a present, kita nilai we assess only the contents of what being presented. We are not assessing their communication. Kan? We are not assessing their communication. Sebab benda tu mungkin tak ada dalam PO ke whatever kan. Tak ada. Benda tu boleh. Okay. Because kita tak nak didik student semua benda yang dia orang buat, everything that they do, they got marks. No, we don't want them to have that mentality. Everything that they do, sama ada small assignments ke kan, even whatever lah kan, committee, form committee ke apa-apa, semuanya dapat markah. As if macam anak kita lah. Kita tak nak semua dia buat kerja, dapat upah. Ha, kita tak nak didik mereka macam tu. It's not good mindset to the students. Because I think, sekarang ni saya dah mula nampak lah because sebelum ni saya nampak kat musi yang musi yang lama-lama. So, musi yang musi yang UTHM dah mula ada lah this kind of mindset, you know. You know what mindset? Student ni kata, dia kata nanti, apa yang saya dapat? Kan? What? Apa yang saya, uh, kalau saya bantu komuniti ke, apa yang saya dapat? Dapat dah masuk dalam apa? Uh, apa nama? Uh, penilaian ke, apa benda, smap dia orang ke, benda macam tu lah kan? Apa yang saya dapat? Well then, kalau you tak join, tak dapat apa-apa. Kalau you join, kalau tak dapat dalam smart phone, you got this experience. Kan? Itu yang kita nak sebenarnya. But then when students uh, start to ask those questions, uh, saya tak berapa happy lah actually. For me, myself, eh, personal eh, personally. Eh. I don't know about you all lah. I don't know about the faculty lah kan. But then dia tanya apa yang saya dapat. So, okay lah. Kalau you tanya macam tu, then tak payah join lah. Then you tak dapat apa-apa lah. Senang cerita. Okay. So that's why bukan semua perkara kita sepatutnya bagi markah tak. Kita bagi markah kepada yang sepatutnya saja yang kita nak nilai saja. Okey. Okey. Ah okey Dr. Sofi kita ada soalan. Boleh. Um, apa bukti yang diperlukan oleh panel EAC yang menunjukkan kita telah melaksanakan complex engineering problem dalam subjek kita? Okey now about the bukti We can give this, apa nama, macam saya tunjuk ni, okay. We can give this, maksudnya kita bagi apa nama benda alah ni, right. And then we have apa nama rubrik kan. We have apa nama mungkin skema atau contoh jawapan daripada students perhaps. Contohnya kan. So then from the report of the students, kita ambil satu dua contoh yang baik. Ataupun kita pun sendiri, we have our own punya skema, our own punya apa nama sample of apa nama Uh, solutions. Dekat dalam tu kita tunjukkan. Okay, this is WP2. And then there are multiple solutions. Okay, this is extent of stakeholders. Nanti student to interview apa benda semua, kita collect. This is the WP4. Uh, WP6, sorry. Extent of stakeholders. And then apa nama generate multiple solution. We ask them, we ask the students to find at least two solutions perhaps. Kan? Okay, this is WP3 perhaps on analysis and also analyze. So kita tunjukkan macam tu saja. Because apa nama uh, uh, auditor ni dia mereka gembira those inputs bukti-bukti tu semua datang daripada students. It's not from us. One other way kita boleh buat report. We can make reports. Macam yang saya buat dulu-dulu lah. Saya I I'm the connector of EDP. I'm preparing a report. That those report I explain to the apa nama uh, auditor, kita explain macam mana kita justify this is WP4, this is WP3, this is WP7 kan. Yang tu pun boleh. Kita buat report tak ada masalah. I will show my report lah. Very simple report. Two page je. Two page je. I will show later. Okay. Uh. So then apa nama. Tapi then the question is okay this is what you claim lah kan. Okay this is what we claim the lecturers. What about the students? Betul ke dia punya report tu, dia punya jawapan tu comply dengan apa yang you tulis kan? Uh, that's why the auditors, they are very very happy kalau bukti tu is from the students tu sendiri. The student punya example ke, or, or during the interview of the students, yes we have complex problem, kita gini 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 apa semua kan, dia cerita pasal verb, verbally kan, good enough, good enough for the auditor. Okay Lili? Itu saja. Okay, thank you. So let's proceed on the complex learning activities. Like I said, like we have seen just now. Okay, alama, jam eh, I go back to uh, 
this one okay so complex engineering activities is stated only in po10 so meaning kalau ada po10 you can deliver complex activities communication in complex activities kalau tak ada basically tak ada lah tak perlulah but it can be done it can be done as well tapi tak perlu senang cerita macam tu this is from the board sendiri yang beritahu lah kan uh, when i attended the course and board sendiri yang beritahu so begitu juga we, we look here in the mapping yang ini tadi complex engineering problem okay po1 to po5 complex engineering problem yang ni complex engineering activities ea ea okay ea Okay, now we we will be seeing on how to carry out this complex engineering activities. Okay. Uh, right. So it relates with PO10 communication. Communicate effectively on complex activities with the engineering community and with society. Able to comprehend, write, present, give, and receive instructions. So there are two types of apa nama uh, communication written and also verbal. So according to the board in or to the council, okay, written report prototype drawings can be regarded as part of communication as well. So written communication or verbal communication presentation, viva, uh, you buat debate, you buat apa nama uh, forum, whatever semua lah kan verbal. Okay, yang tu verbal punya presentation uh, communications. Uh, so let's see the requirement for EA. Previously, the requirement for problem, complex problem was WP1 and WP227. Two, okay, two from WP227. But for EA, you can choose some or all EA1 to EA5. Maksudnya, dua, at least minimum two from EA1 to EA5. There is no compulsory EA. Tak ada. You can choose. There is no specific uh, EA ya. Okay. Untuk apa nama kita as a compulsory. Kita boleh pilih EA1 and EA4. Oh, you can choose three. EA1, EA5 and EA3. You can choose all EA. Tapi kalau satu saja elemen, not complex activities yet. Not enough. So minimum two, okay? Uh, can reason can be reasonably encountered during IDP and industrial training. Uh, kebiasaannya EA ni kita leave out kat situ lah senang sikit. Uh, or maybe in the lab ke kan? Lab, lab, lab kita ada activities, kita produce reports kan? So I think laboratory also can lah. So yang ini kita lihat apa uh, nama uh, range of resources. So what is range of resources? It involves the use of diverse resources, uh, people, money, equipment, materials, and so on. Level of interactions is the uh, engineering number two, type of activities number two. Require resolution of significant problems arising from interaction between wide ranging or conflicting technical engineering or issues. Activities number three, type three, it require innovation. Involve creative use of engineering principles. Activities type four, it have it has significant consequences in the range of context to society and the environment. Uh, okay, apa nama keluarkan asap ke tanpa asap ke kan yang yang boleh impact pada environment and society. Familiarity of issues, yang ni sama eh lebih kurang sama can understand beyond experience previous experiences by applying principle based approaches yang ni lebih kurang sama dengan WP berapa yang kita ada tadi WP sorry ya eh, I went back okay ada ah, lebih for familiarity of issues lah lebih kurang sama lah dia punya ni ha kau yang mana which is the activities are of unfamiliar punya uh, nature lah kita uh, go detail sikit lah yang ni yang kata brief description range of resources involve these of diverse resources so uh, mungkin dari segi funding equipment kan so macam mana cara nak buat because this is communication so you have range of resources so you have to the student have to report okay mungkin ada report of work progress against schedule ke kan yang mana ada resources semua so 
they should be able to communicate this activity. Activity which involve range of resources to develop plans. Ke. So in ini semua in terms of writing lah, written punya communication. Uh, and activities number two, type two is level of interactions. Okay. So require resolution of significant problems arise from interaction between what ranging or conflicting technical engineering or other issues. So unforeseen engineering issues. Contoh. Uh, okay. Contohnya macam okay. Uh, this I, I'm giving the uh, real project lah kan. Contohnya nak lay cable, underground cable. So, bila nak lay cable tegak, rupa-rupanya ada ground cable dekat bawah tu, you ada servis lain. Servis lain. Servis lain ni maksudnya ada pipeline, ada water pipe daripada SAJ and then ada apa nama uh, gas pipe ke contohnya kan. Then what do you do? Macam mana you nak solve benda ni? Kan? Uh, kena ada drawings. Contohnya kalau tegak, nak lay cable tu tegak. And then suddenly dekat hujung tu ada batu besar yang tak boleh dialihkan. And then it kena belok sikit. Kan? Nak ngelakkan batu tu. Patutnya initial drawing consultant bagi tegak. But then you are as the contractor nak nak jalankan projek. You have to deviate sikit. So macam mana you buat deviate sikit tu? Ada tak kira ada punya darjah ke degrees ke whatever kan? Depending on the type of cable tu boleh ke? Kan? Ataupun type of the apa nama uh, pipe nak masukkan kabel tu, UPVC part tu boleh ke belok? Belok kalau boleh belok, how many degrees contohnya? So those are unforeseen engineering issues. Mungkin ada. And then, we have to report it maybe in the drawing. Okay, tunjukkan cara dah. So that how we communicate all these issues. Because semua ni dalam communication. Innovation. Okay lah, yang ni very straightforward I think. Involve creative use of engineering principles and recipient knowledge. So what new materials, new process ke, thinking out of the box, macam mana cara nak apa nama soft kan. Uh, what are the creative solutions out of the box thought process to promote innovation. Uh, so yang ini I mean uh, most of uh, mungkin you all punya projects ada benda ni lah innovate, innovation. Oh IDP, of course IDP ada innovation contoh kan. Consequences to society and environment. So basically, who is affected and how? Uh, engineering solution, perhaps apa nama kita contoh uh, uh, exhaust from factory. Okay, factory yang melepaskan socks and NOx. And apa nama socks apa sulfur and also NOx so NOx. And then the students might design as filter. And uh, so maybe yang itu ada consequences ada good consequences lah kepada society and environment perhaps contoh kan who is affected and how are they affected and also the familiarity yang ni macam that's just like I said the type engineering activities type 5 whether it is a new experience when they are doing that activities which is not previously or rarely encountered or familiar experience with either clearly defined approaches where these approaches is new to them, new to them approaches, or many unique issues that uh, enhance the, the experience that they have uh, pernama, encountered before. Okay, so from these five elements of engineering activities, okay, choose any two, any two. Okay, any two. This is for PO10. Uh, kalau ada PO10, kena buat. Oh, boleh buat. Up to the faculty lah kan. You ask TDA lah. Kena buat ke? Boleh buat bro. Kalau boleh, tak apa. Tak, tak boleh, tak apa. Sunnah mu'akad. Kena. Kalau mak, wajib padu ain. <laughs> Alright. Uh, tapi ni sebenarnya padu kefayah. Kalau orang buat, kita tak boleh buat. Tak apa kot. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, in a nutshell, that's for complex engineering problem and also complex engineering activities. Siapa tanya tadi? Uh, Farhana Hani, I, I, I don't remember. So basically complex problem solving kita ada dua. Complex problem solving. So complex engineering problem, complex engineering activities. CEP, CEA. Uh, problem ni lah yang orang kata uh, might have to focus more lah sebab dia banyak 
PO yang attached, complex inductivities pun kita lihat tapi lebih kepada PO10 saja. Okey. So, uh, yang ni cadangan daripada EAC. So, meaning mem bila mereka kata cadangan, when they are say this is a suggestion from EAC, okay, they might be looking into this as well lah, kan? They might be looking into this as well lah. So, this is kind of a reminder lah to those, to TDA and also to those committees under TDA lah yang directly related into this one. IDP. So, IDP ni memang dilihat. So, IDP should deliver complex problem. FYP, commonly known as user project, okay. I don't want to read all this apa nama benda ni semua eh because I will be sharing this uh, apa nama ni PowerPoint later lah okay final project kalau boleh make it compulsory so make it compulsory okay IDP final project industrial training boleh uh, laboratory experiences yang ni mungkin uh, I think really not a problem lah mungkin activities lah activities But then, if we want to carry out engineering activities, complex activities in laboratories, so syllabus dia have to map dengan PO10 lah. Kan? Nak buat lah boleh buat activities. Suruh nak sikit nak buat lah. Sebab apa suruh nak sikit nak buat? Because ada requirement nak buat. Jadi kalau tak ada map dengan PO10, tiba-tiba, okay, you have to do activities. Alamak, tak, buk, tak ada pun kan. So mungkin kena revision sikit on the laboratory experiences mungkin tak semua laboratory mungkin yang involve open ended approach yang mana you have open ended approach ni kemungkinan open ended approach ni untuk laboratory experiences atau laboratory activities dia ada all this some of this uh, they are not familiar to the problem they have to come with innovation sikit kan ataupun dan sebagainya lah and then they, they have to present in the report in uh, verbally kan so you meet the PO10 communication and also complex engineering activities for laboratories. Okay. Uh, now, sebelum you all tanya, saya tanya. Use of final examination for complex problem solving. Many believe that examination is not suitable to assess complex engineering problem solving skills. And it must involve activities, especially integrated activities and discussion such as case study. Of course lah, betul lah ni. Kan? Kebanyakan kita memang fikir benda yang sama. But can it be done? Yes, it can be done. But then, di soalan tu tak boleh conventional punya soalan. Tak boleh conventional punya questions. You cannot use conventional questions to deliver complex problem. Tak boleh. Because we have complex problem tadi, kita ada requirement ni kan? You have elements of complex problem that you have to comply. So then how the final examination will uh, apa nama uh, look uh, so contoh macam nilah yang dia yang ni yang dia bagi yang I jumpa this guy Fang ni Fang so this is one of his examination question which involve complex in problem for me At the moment, as of now, jangan. Tak perlu masuk complex problem solving, complex any problem dalam final exam. Susah nak justify. Okay? Because final examination is very important. Kalau you silap buat, tergerincir, habislah. And so, let us start complex any problem dengan maybe small assignment dulu or small project dulu. Or even PBL yang you are doing sepanjang ni, 2-3 years ni, that one can be done in complex problem, complex in problem juga. Cumanya nak kena ada documentation tu cantik sikit lah. Kan? Documentation tu cantik sikit lah. So, I wouldn't suggest lah for us to 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 deliver complex problem dalam final exam. Kalau nak buat, boleh. Maybe in 5 to 10 years time, yang mana semua orang dah pandai, all of us are expert in complex problem and then you want to try complex problem for final examination, Go on, proceed. Even me, I'm, I'm not confident lah. So, kalau you confident, by all means, teruskan saja. Okay. Uh, so, saya ada nak share further info, contoh sikit apa yang saya ada. Sebelum tu, kalau ada soalan. 
Zakat ni tak ada. Okey, okay, tak apa. Tak ada tak apa. So, okey, kita proceed dulu sekejap. Ada, ada Lily. Alamak, ada, ada, ada. Okey. Uh, ada. Ada Lily dia kata kita persilakan Dr. Hamid. Kiriza. Saya, saya dah tanya dekat chat box sebenarnya. Okey, uh, sebab masa yang penerangan uh, CPE ni, apa yang saya tengok, dia based on real problem. So, adakah ini konsep dia macam PBL? Pas, nah, macam tu lah. So, macam sebab in term of... Uh, kalau kita tengok apa yang situasi dan penerangan yang diberikan based on soalan yang contoh tadi Saya rasa macam konsepnya adalah based on PBL cuma uh, PBL dia tak adalah uh, dia punya grup-grup dia tu It's general tapi the way it, it implement tu macam PBL betul ke pandangan saya macam gitu uh, macam tu Okay 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 uh, Okay So pick up problem dia macam PBL, memang macam PBL but okay, macam you katalah I showed you all problem yang macam PBL kan? I showed you all problem yang macam PBL uh, Where is my problem? This one Okay, nampak PBL because why? Saya tunjukkan problem ni sebab saya nak cuba cover as many WP as possible from this one uh, example So this one example might cover WP2, WP4 and WP6 and WP3 kan, WP5 salah satu contoh tapi but if your apa nama uh, assignment is this it's that simple okay which okay WP1 ni memang ada which involve only depth of analysis and we can confirm that it is unfamiliar to the students it's complex enough Dah cukup tu je. Tak perlu real life. Dia cantiknya real life lah kan. But then tak perlu. Okay. The student is unfamiliar, very unfamiliar. Ni apa benda ni benda baru. And then require maybe depth of analysis. Contoh. Then dah boleh jadi complex. Okay. Ha. So tak memang lah. Kalau macam PBL tu memang dah complex lah for me pun. Cuma nak kena ada proper documentation. But if you are not doing PBL ada one type of assignment sikit but can comply with any two from this 2 to 7 dah cukup lah tak perlu buat panjang-panjang macam PBL because kita remember eh kita pun tak nak burden the students burden the students so how to arrange this contoh eh uh, third year and fourth year students eh mereka ambil subject core subjects subjects yang advanced high end punya subjects kalau semua buat complex problem then macam mana kan pening student tu so this is the job for sorry to say head of program and also KPB how to coordinate this how to coordinate this okay uh, uh, contoh me myself saya dalam dalam jabatan saya yang dalam VEV saya beritahu kalau subject to those subjects who doesn't not uh, yang bukan PBL Okay, yang bukan PBL, subjek-subjek yang ada assignment biasa Deadline for assignment is up to week 10 only Sebab apa? Week 11, 12 and 13, 14 tu Student akan sibuk nak hantar PBL punya assignment Student akan sibuk dengan PSM 1 punya report Student akan sibuk PSM 2 punya report Student akan sibuk dengan IDP punya report Okay So kalau you bagi assignment pun Dia punya deadline minggu ke 14 Walaupun you give this the assignment tu masa minggu kedua walaupun assignment tu boleh siap dalam masa 2 3 minggu but still you are giving the deadline minggu ke-14 bila dia akan buat minggu ke-14 dia akan buat so we let's help the student by imposing the deadline tu earlier minggu ke-8 kena hantar so dah settle satu perkara so this is how, how we help the student to manage their time juga ha so ini Uh, ketua program kami lah kan cakap orang tapi saya sendiri lah kan <laughs> kena panggil and arrange lah kan uh, kemungkinan untuk tahun tiga ada dua kursus yang yang contoh ada dua kursus yang yang melibatkan uh, investigation soalan memang susah EMT dengan whatever lah kan contoh so I ask the coordinator uh, power quality test minggu ke enam dalam masa yang sama student akan ambil subjek high voltage High voltage test minggu kelima. Ha, so kita 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 buat macam tu. 
so that uh, kita tolong juga student so kalau the high voltage masa minggu ke-5 low voltage minggu ke-6 uh, jauh sikit lah dia punya nak study tu kan kalau dulu buat minggu ke-6 walaupun hari lain-lain tak clash tak apa memang student lecturer kata senang lecturer tak clash ok lah but then the student yalah, hari ni test high voltage is about quality kan memang tak ada quality lah ok so in doing this in carrying out this complex any problems there are other issues yang mana student side yang kita tak rasa ok because we handle only one cost but the students they absorb how many courses four or five courses yang core punya courses so dengan cerita lain agak-agak lah jangan bagi jangan bagi apa nama soalan yang terlalu kompleks you bersemangat nak tick semua kan ha, tak perlulah just short assignment yang you rasa ada involved ni cukup lah Ataupun I think maybe the faculty through TDA and also kita program kita dah determine semester ni yang mana deliver complex. Yang mana tak tak perlu. Macam PBL lah yang mana deliver PBL. Yang mana tak perlu PBL hmm. kan contohnya. But of course in terms of apa nama EAC punya pandangan mereka suggest lah suggest mungkin mereka akan lihat dalam IDP 5P industrial training lah. Kan? Atau WBL ha, ni yang baru ni kalau ada Double three mungkin boleh ada sikit lah untuk activities lah, untuk activities eh. Ha, kalau subjek-subjek lain kita boleh start sikit-sikit lah. Jangan banyak-banyak. Okay, sebab kita nak tersilap. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Next lain. Soalan ke apa? Sharing. Hmm, ada soalan. Hmm. Tapi saya macam dah dengar Dr. Safi jawab tadi. Soalannya adakah IDP dan PSM perlu ada elemen WP dan Um, dan soalan yang kedua, higher cognitive, higher cognitive level C5 dan C6 implies complex engineering problems. Is this a correct understanding? <laughs> uh, okay, yang pertama tadi jawapan dia yes. Dah ada pun kat dalam ni. So macam mana cara nak buat? Uh, mungkin boleh discuss, kita boleh discuss dengan TDA. I mean macam mana, dengan komiti sekali kan. How kita buat ni memang dah kompleks. Cuma now macam mana kita nak dokumenkan saja menunjukkan this our apa nama our execution of FIP and also IDP ni kompleks dengan kompleks dengan kompleks punya dokumen by EAC tu saja kan. Macam mana kita nak dokumenkan dia cantik tu. And then higher order thinking adakah si 5 si 6 tu kompleks? For me dia berlainan. Okay? Hai order tinggi ni it might have uh, dia mungkin berkaitan dengan mungkin difficulty level lah kot. So lima ni susah sikit lah because you need judgement. But then kalau you high order thinking tapi macam saya tunjuk di sini lah. Uh, you kena ada uh, one and this two. So dia boleh berkaitan kalau nak solve that problem require high order thinking and also it meets this apa nama statement ni WP1 and sum of all WP227 then it is complex tak ada masalah but then if high order thinking cuma perlukan that for knowledge saja kan tak perlu ada analysis contohnya kan so mungkin tak adalah so mungkin boleh jawapannya boleh ada boleh jadi complex boleh tak jadi complex but complex punya requirement ha, benda ni benda ni. Uh, so in delivering this WP1 kita ada WP WK sampai 1 WK uh, 4 kan. Okey jap eh. Saya tunjuk eh. Uh, okey yang ni. <coughs> WP1 tadi WP1 from PO1 sampai PO5. Okey, PO1 sampai PO5. Yang mana dia melibatkan WK 3 4 5 6 dan 8. Dalam CO, dalam CO dekat RPP kemungkinan PO1 kita up to C3 only or up to C4 only kan so kita kena deliver C3, C4 okay but even that C3 and C4 boleh laksanakan complex problem dengan cara tambahkan WP2 sehingga WP7 tadi yang mana dua tu je ha. so it doesn't apa nama necessarily to be WC5 or C6 tak bukan okay C4, C3 boleh. C5, C6 pun boleh juga. Tapi kalau tak compare dengan WP2 hingga 7 tadi, 
Tak, bukan kompleks lah. Okey. Okey, saya proceed sikit. Yang ni just contoh simple. Ah, uh, Yang mana kita ada matriks. Okey, yang ni untuk membantu. Uh, membantu apa nama very simple jadual okey in words baik okey contoh a uh, kita pilih nantilah saya buka course material satu a uh, syllabus electronic communication system syllabus ni kita ada PO1 PO8 PO10. Okay. This is the matrix. Uh, boleh nampak tak? Ah? Harap boleh nampak tak? Eh? Okay. Matrix ni, you abaikan sebelah kiri ni dulu. Kita tengok sebelah kanan knowledge profile. <coughs> okay. Dia ada PO tadi 1, 8 dan 10. This is what I give to my <coughs> staff lah. To BEV, JKEK staff eh. So, kalau ada PO1, yang ni PO1, okay, PO1, so kat sini kita X kan dia, kita maksudnya, bila deliver PO1, kita kena comply WK1, 2, 3 dan 4, kan, tadi. PO8, ada tak PO8, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, yang ni PO8. PO8, PO10 is for this one, activities, kan, okay, so yang ini, yang ni kita biar dulu. Okay, part ni biar dulu. So now, untuk kita determine dia dah masuk WP1 ke tidak, daripada sini kita punya pangkah adalah WK 1, 2, 3, 4 dan 7. Yang ni. Yang ni bukan PO kita. So, ab boleh abaikan. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 dan 7. Yang mana kita ada 1, 2, 3, 4 dan Tujuh tak ada dalam senarai eh. Sebab tujuh bukan kompleks problem. So, bila WP1 ni ada je pangkah, bermaksud kita boleh buat kompleks problem. Kita boleh buat kompleks problem. So, kalau misalkan kata tak ada pangkah, maksudnya kita punya kursus ni tak ada WK3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Maksudnya tak ada PO1, PO2, PO3, PO4, PO5. Sebab tujuh ni tak kira. Tujuh ni tak kira. Okay. Eh? So tak ada 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. So tak, tak ada pangkah kat sini pun. Ha, so you senang cerita jangan nak ngada-ngada lah buat WP. Ha, tak perlu. Sebab tak banyak tak ada benda ni. Tak ada knowledge nak solve benda alah ni semua. Tak ada. So bila benda ni dah ada ha, lagi, we are give, give the assignment okay, give the assignment and then that assignment tu you choose lah. Kan? Sama ada assignment tu comply dengan depth analysis ke, okay, katakan kat sini dan comply dengan uh, mungkin involve stakeholders, kena pergi interview orang lah apa benda semua kan. Lepas interview dapat data, kena analyze. Uh, contoh yang dua ni. Uh, dua lah, minimum dua. Uh, kalau nak lagi kompleks, tambah lagi satu. Lagi kompleks, tambah lagi satu. Dah buat semua, uh, jatuh Shopee kompleks nanti. Usah lah, budak-budak ikut Shopee kompleks. Okay. Now, Okay, itu untuk just matrix tunjuk, menunjukkan lah yang kita ada complex problem. Dan kemudian 10. 10 bila ada 10 bermaksud uh, yang ni 10. Apa nama PO 10, communication skills kan. Yang ni untuk activities. Activities tadi, you pilih dua. Kemungkinan activities tu unfamiliar dan juga innovation. Ada innovation nak laksanakan. Mungkin ada resources sikit, minimum dua tapi you pilih tiga. So, basically jadual ni untuk membantu kita lah uh, as a summary sikit lah. Summary sikit. Orang kata men, yang mana nak tunjukkan kita dah comply dengan complex problem solving atau complex engine problem iaitu kita dah deliver WP1 dan WP3 yang ini serta WP6. Nak tengok bukti kat mana? Bukti sama ada dalam report yang kita akan buat ataupun dalam student punya report yang mana kita highlight kan. Serta kita comply EA and activities dengan kita laksanakan range of resources, innovation dan juga familiarity of issues contohnya. Ha. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, 
So saya tunjuk sikit je contoh report yang saya buat ni dulu-dulu zaman jahiliah lah. Saya pun tak tahu kan macam mana kan. Okay. Uh, ini saya buat. Okay. Ya, kalau tengok kat sini dulu kita guna PLO lain. Tak sama dengan PO. Kan sebab tu saya buat kurungan-kurungan ni. Dalam EDP dulu ada 4, 5, 7, 11. So saya map, 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 map kan. Then saya beritahu EDP ni saya pilih WP3 dan WP4. Okay. Okay. WP3 dan WP4. Okay. Activities masa tu sepatutnya tak perlu tak ada communication. Tapi tak tahu kan. Kita ingat kena buat. Saya buat jugalah communication. Satu, tiga dan lima. Okay. Then macam mana saya nak justify benda ni. So yang kita kena justify yang kita pangkah ni lah. WP3 dan WP4 ni. Serta EA1, tiga dan lima ni. WP1 ni of course dia ambil daripada PO. Kan daripada PO ni. Daripada PO ni, ha, daripada PO lah. Ah, ni saya cerita sikit lah. Ni berkenaan dengan WP. So, depth of knowledge required. Ha, yang ni memang ha, WK348 lah. Eh, okay, 3,4,8 sekejap eh. Saya naik atas mula. Ha, yang ni lah, yang map ni. 3, 4 dan 8. 3, 4 dan 8. So, uh, kita goreng sikit lah. EDP requires significant emphasis on engineering fundamentals and specialists uh, whatever lah. Right. Lepas tu, depth of analysis required. There is no prescribed solution to this project. Creative thinking in terms of the product concept, its technical and ornamental features, whatever yang saya tulis ni, saya beritahu. So, project EDP ni macam ni dia punya nature dia. Kemudian, familiarity of issues. Saya beritahu kat, apa nama, kepada whoever yang baca ni, whether audit ke atau you all. The technical and contextual challenges of this project are likely to be unfamiliar to most students. Okay, sebab tu saya justify uh, EDP, my EDP comply with WP1, 3 and 4. Problem type 1, problem type 3 and problem type 4. And to deliver activities, I stated here, I complied with EA1 which is range of resources, EA3 innovation and also EA5 familiarity familiarity of issues okay so what's my justification these are my justifications so it involves range of resources a team project with each member allocated an individual responsibility or portfolio as discussed with each group and respective advisor so setiap EDP ada advisor very minimum budget is allocated kan in terms of electronic components only, yang ni uh, uh, mohon kat store je. Itu je yang kita allocate for students to each teams. Uh, and encouragement is given to recycled items. No specific labs or workshops are scheduled. So yang ni mungkin dia punya limitation. Dia kena cari sendiri. Teams must manage and schedule their own resource requirement. So yang ni saya claim as range of resources. And then innovation. Novelty in product design is an essential consideration. Identify novel and attractive product features with which meet the objectives as well as the educational needs. Research-based knowledge is generated, evaluated and applied. Ha, memang ayat cantik lah. <laughs> memang ayat cantik lah untuk kita justify innovation. And lastly, the familiarity. This project presents significant challenges beyond what students have experienced in previous project assignments. Maksudnya dalam previous course, masa dia tahun 2, tahun 3 tu, during their second year and third year project, third, oh sorry, second year and first year tu, ada experience. So this project ni, dia, dia reach beyond their experience lah kan. In particular, project management and the strong emphasis on meeting challenging technical problems through application of sound problem solving principles informed by existing and new knowledge. Nah, bit, satu ayat je semua ni. So, ini satu contoh yang, ma yang mana boleh kita boleh yang kata first document untuk kita tunjuk sebagai proof. But then, of course, auditor, dia akan tengok juga report student. Sebab tu saya kata, the best input to the auditor is from the student. Bila baca report student, alamak, ini lecturer claim cantik, tapi student tulis apa benda, maka kenalah major concern. <laughs> okay, so, uh, uh, itu je lah yang saya nak tunjuk. Ah, uh, These are my references. 
uh, AAC standard 2020, IA graduate attributes dan so on lah. Yang Siti Hawa Hamzah lah. Saya banyak refer kepada dia orang ni lah yang AAC punya ni. Okay, pada workshop. Uh, so, that's all from me for now. So, if you have any questions, suggestions, opinions, voice the up so we can share the knowledge together. Uh, Sophie, ada contoh report pelajar untuk membuktikan yang complex engineering problem? Okay. <laughs> report pelajar eh. Uh, contohnya, contoh report pelajar masa tu hard copy lah. Masa I jadi coordinator kan, belum ada soft copy. But then, okay. What I did when my <laughs> I was delivering my apa nama EDP, okay. Saya explain tau. Sekejap eh. Saya ada tu dalam ni tak? Ha? Saya rasa macam uh, EDP. Alamak, tak ada lah pula. Uh, ni yang baru. Uh, okay, tak apalah. Uh, I explain to them, okay, apakah dia kompleks ni? Dan saya uh, explain kepada mereka, I explain to them all these things tau. So, I explain apakah dia range of conflicting requirements, what is that, so that meaning that they decide themselves with their advisor, okay, because each project tu berbeza, ni cerita lain lah, each project tu berbeza, kan. Ada banyak advisor, 30 orang advisor dalam JKEK, so 30 jenis project. Okay, but we have one team lah, satu tema, right? one team, the same team, but project tu berbeza-beza. Bila project berbeza-beza, saya fikir, when I was the coordinator, bila project berbeza, might be this project ada WP1, 3 and 4, kan? And the other project pula, ada advisor tu nak kena pergi interview orang, orang kampung, kan? So, each project mungkin berbeza-beza dia punya, map, dia punya bukan mapping lah, dia punya apa nama, uh, eh, mapping ni lah kan? So, I explain this to the students, so the students faham and the advisor faham, so they themselves along the way, dia orang laksanakan IDP tu or EDP, mereka sendiri tahu nak map kat mana. Bila mereka sendiri tahu nak map kat mana, okay, bila sendiri tahu nak map kat mana, maksudnya benda tu ada dalam report, ada dalam report, tunjuk, mereka tunjukkan sendiri kat mana DC WP6 dan WP5. Dan bila interview, when they are interviewed by the audit, auditors, mereka boleh jawab sendiri lah because mereka faham this problem, complex problem. Uh. Kalau nak tunjuk contoh kat situ, kat ni tak adalah kat sini dalam ni because uh, laptop ni baru dapat daripada PTM so <laughs> tak ada lagi. Uh, semua dalam hadis. Nanti Iman kalau nak boleh share later lah share. Mana? Okay, okay boleh. Okay guys, anything? Share. Dato' Sofie, okay. Dato' Sofie, saya nak tanya sikit. Hmm, Nas. Uh, apa, dalam kita punya borang vetting untuk test dengan final kan, kena isi juga CP ni. So, macam mana kan? Kena isi, apa, setiap soalan tu kena isi CP ke macam mana dalam final? <laughs> tu? Itu saya susah nak, nak, nak apa, nak isi tu saya tak faham sangat. Ada betul kan. contoh. Uh, kan, itulah. <laughs> minta maaf cakap eh, minta maaf cakap lah. Saya minta maaf sangat. Saya dah cakap benda dah lama. Dah lama. Saya cakap dekat meeting in the faculty. Take this out. Dalam final exam, dalam test, janganlah letak complex problem. Kan? Tapi, minta maaf cakap, saya tak tahu siapa yang kena ubah. Mungkin you can ask the higher level. It is above my pay grade lah sedang cerita kan. Uh, you can ask the TDA or the dean lah. Saya sorry ya, TDA dengan dia kan, minta maaf. Uh, saya dah minta lah. Because why? Because why? Saya takut nanti kita terjerat. You buat jerat, tapi you masuk sendiri. Kita letak staff suruh beritahu kat mana kompleksnya soalan-soalan final exam ni. But then staff tak tahu lah, tak isi. And tak isi ataupun main isi saja. Bila audit datang, tanya tak boleh jawab siapa yang kena. Kita yang kena lah kan. Kita yang kena. So, <laughs> I have to say this out loud dah lah kan dalam, dalam, dalam bencana ni kan. Tengok balik lah vetting form tu. Because I don't have the power, I don't have the authority. Kan. Actually, ada authority je saya nak buat sebenarnya. Minit, maksud, maksudnya, program ni, dia independent to each other. Sepatutnya dia Dr. independent Sophie, to each other. Uh, berkenaan dengan... Dr. Sofi. Ya. Yeah. Uh, berkenaan dengan open-ended, apa, take home final exam. Uh -huh. Itu macam mana eh? Dia ada libat complex engineering juga ke? Okay. Take home, 
Macam ni lah, uh, sekarang ni waktu COVID ni kan, banyak take home final exam, banyak open ended kan. Kalau saya cadangkan lah, in final exam tak perlu buat komplek ke? Tak perlu buat. Cukup you comply dengan whatever open ended punya requirement, whatever take home punya requirement. Maksudnya soalan tu tak payah soalan direct. Google dapat da- Google cari terus. I mean, the copy paste you punya question masuk dalam Google and then dapat tahu jawapan lah. Bukan macam tu lah. So mungkin ada sikit apa nama, ubah sikit tu ni. Ah, itu requirement tu later lah. Maksud saya, saya pun tak apa nak tahu sangat apa apa open ended dan juga uh, apa nama tadi, take home punya requirement kan. Mungkin JKPNP kena buat benda lain lah. But complex ni for me lebih sesuai kepada assignment dan juga projek. Bukan, bukan lebih sesuai masa kita, sekarang ni kita fokus yang itu dulu. Kan? Tak perlu susahkan diri kita because you nak buat soalan yang open ended, you nak buat soalan yang take home pun susah. Eh? Sebab sekarang ni mindset kita semua ni masih lagi soalan-soalan yang conventional. Kita masih lagi tengok previous questions nak keluarkan soalan. Kan? Previous questions tu maksudnya student tu duduk tanpa perlu melihat buku. Sekarang ni student duduk boleh tengok buku. So soalan tu kena soalan yang from scratch, fresh question. So it is hard for us sebenarnya. So janganlah make ourselves harder nak impose pula complex dalam soalan. Okay. For now, for me tak perlulah at this moment. Okay, terima kasih. Baik, sama. So, anak saya ni saya belum habis. So, I think mungkin uh, boleh buat improvement lah lepas ni untuk borang tu, borang test dan juga borang final exam, tak perlu ada element of that complex lah. Hopefully. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Ya, yeah, sorry. Yes. Soalan untuk Anas tu berkenaan dengan uh, CEP dalam apa soalan ataupun uh, orang penilaian eh test test dan juga final exam. Sebenarnya sekarang ni a uh, CED ada ambil uh, kumpulkan eh untuk borang-borang tersebut dan uh, pihak CED cadang untuk dia nak uh, buat standard lah untuk mungkin sampai satu uh, UTHM lah. Ingat lagi macam kita punya Uh, ISO punya dokumen untuk file PNP apa semua dikumpulkan dan CAD akan cuba buat standard yang mungkin minimum requirement yang dia nak lah untuk sama satu universiti dan jadi kita uh, pergi ke arah itulah jadi kalau uh, rasanya untuk yang ni kita akan follow up dengan CAD juga kalau dah ada yang ataupun template yang sedia ada ataupun yang nak cuba di propose lah kita akan tunggu dan ikut yang CAD punya lah sebab kalau kita buat Uh, apa kita remove contohnya lah eh, kita dah remove apa semua tu ada tambahan lagi dan sebagainya kan jadi uh, yang uh, uh, kita dapat maklum tu lah si dia ada kumpulkan masuk juga dengan yang apa TOS punya eh TOS untuk semua fakulti atau PDJ untuk mungkin akan dibuat satu standardized TOS format ataupun template lah yang uh, semua fakulti akan follow lah ikut si dia punya ni lah minimum yang macam mana yang dia nak Dekat itulah yang kita ada lah. Okay, okay bos. Terima kasih. Okay. Terima kasih. Alright. Uh, itu hari kita ada for untuk kawan-kawan semua tahu lah kan. Pengurusan fakulti ada perjumpaan dengan TNCA. Okay. TNCA kita baru Puan Azmi. Dalam, dalam perjumpaan dengan TNCA pun saya ada begitu dekat TNCA. Anything decision yang melibatkan akademik curriculum macam tadilah bora, whatever, test ke vetting form harap melihat juga kepada requirement uh, apa nama uh, kita lah as engineering EAC kan so apa nama harap kalau benda tu tak 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 orang kata macam tak favor kepada kita susah kita nak buat ke kan harap uh, sorry tu lah mungkin dikemas dekan atau dekan boleh bagi input kepada TNCA lah. nampak TNCA tu dia faham sebab kita tak nak dia orang fokus sama rata yang jadi mangsa nanti kita contoh misal kata ah uh, buat mas uh, Professional at work contohnya, professional at work kan. So masing-masing kita pun macam engineer, engineering ke tak engineering kan. Tapi dia pukul sama rata semua kan. So I think kena ada you know uh, kalau 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 uh, big boss ni macam terlibat dengan all this work kan. Mungkin Dr. Abul pun ada agaknya sekali boleh kita boleh beritahu kan. So maksudnya buat yang sesuai memang untuk engineering boleh, engineering boleh. Bukannya satu ni alamat kita part engineering ni macam mana nak comply, susah nak comply kan. Nah, ada benda-benda yang kita kena lah. Hopefully macam tu lah. Eh. Uh. Terima kasih bos. Okay, anything? Gang?
Okey, Dr. Sofi. Ada, ya, ya. Uh, ada satu soalan daripada Dr. Chiu. Uh, ini berkenaan dengan ada kewujudan satu website Dia macam student boleh tanya soalan dekat situ tau Jadi hmm. mereka tolong jawab uh, macam itulah Jadi soalan dia nak uh, Salam PM Dato' Safi nak tumpang tanya Student siap beli hey. online account Group dia okay. perlu login dengan password Dalam group tiru mereka okay. Website dia uh, www.check.com okay, Saya pun pernah jumpa website ni Uh, then apa boleh buat dengan semua CEP ini? Maksudnya kita dah buat soalan dalam bentuk open book test. Jadi student memang tak dapat Google jawapan. Tapi student dia share jawapan ni dekat website ni. Waktu online test. Uh, jadinya geng-geng dia boleh share jawapan dekat situ waktu online test tersebut. <laughs> macam ada satu sebab saya pernah tengok juga kalau kita tak faham, kita nak suruh dia macam website tolong solvekan soalan lah. Macam tu lah. Dia, dia macam ada tutor kot macam tu. Um, okay, so, okay. Alright. Uh, itulah uh, macam mana nak buat lah. Uh, I think benda ni pun pernah di uh, survey ni pernah dibuat lah oleh UTHM, oleh I think TNCA, sebelum TNCA ni lah iaitu Proxima L kan. Dia pun pernah bagi lah benda ni uh, macam survey student in terms of ethics kan, in terms of ethics lah. Macam mana cara nak buat dengan ni, apa cadangan kita kan. Saya pun sebenarnya Uh, tak sure lah macam mana cara I mean kita sekarang dah hidup dengan teknologi kan I mean kalau kita sekat di teknologi dia boleh ada teknologi lain yang boleh bypass benda-benda gitu kan so macam mana lah nak buat I think kena uh, really uh, sit down kot uh, ataupun tak boleh nak buat apa kot entahlah kan eh? Uh, I mean, kalau dia even tak payah guna check.com lah kan dia buat group whatsapp dia kerja dah cukup dah group whatsapp without kita ah uh, soalan dia then discuss sama, sama sama sendiri macam mana kita nak buat benda tu kan so but in, masalahnya sekarang ni kita nak access students kan kita nak access students uh, of course in a different angle in a different angle of you kalau you bekerja kat luar as a consultant perhaps kan yeah, as a consultant you have one problem what do you do you, kalau you tak tahu you kan tanya kawan-kawan kamu kan you 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 will start asking lah kan tanya consultant ni eh, macam mana cara nak buat ni kan so macam student ni buat lah kan so that's one thing lah kan uh, kalau nak look at the positive way look at the positive way but the problem is we are assessing them kalau yang kerja kat luar tu tak ada siapa assess pun dia kena bagi jawapan aja kan So then bila kita assess them, maksudnya mereka akan dapat markah yang sama lah, walaupun mereka tak tahu sebab copy paste masalahnya kan. So uh, macam mana cara nak buat lah. Uh, I don't know perhaps even kalau uh, yelah, sebab dia buat jawapan tu pun dia share dekat dalam check.com tu kan dan semua orang boleh buat kan. Uh, entah eh. Tak tahulah kalau siapa-siapa ada cara ke boleh share lah. For me, memang uh, saya tak tahu nak cakap lah. Mungkin uh, ini boleh share dengan TDA ke, dekan ke, even the higher level. Atau peringkat even ministry katnya kan. Macam mana cara nak buat ni. Blog je lah check.com tu ni website kan. So SKM blog. <laughs> uh, tak tahu nak cakap lah. Minta maaf lah. Uh, sebab ni ethics punya issues ni kan. Uh. So betul lah. Tamam. Assalamualaikum. Kalau saya boleh tambah sikit eh. Hmm. <laughs> Okey, benda ni itu ada dibincangkan dalam grup uh, dekan-dekan majlis dekan-dekan kejuruteraan lah. Uh, bagaimana untuk apa tu ke masalah peniruan kan macam-macam cara dia buat lah. Dia guna kamera, guna apa tapi still bias masalah tu berlaku. Cuma dia cadangkan dekat universiti ialah uh, macam mana kita boleh gunakan satu polisi untuk membendung masalah. Sebab kira kita buat secara face to face, kita boleh tangkap pelajar tu kalau jumpa, tengok dia menirukan, tengok phone ke apa, ada bukti. Tapi kalau online ni macam tak ada bukti kan. Macam nak? Tu, jadi uh, dalam mesyuarat dekan-dekan kejuruteraan tu dia cadangkan supaya ni mesti buat satu polisi yang jelas uh, macam mana kita boleh bawa pelajar yang meniru ni ke jatuh kuasa tata tertib ya, yang, di, yang dipengurusikan oleh TNCA. Jadi saya rasa uh, untuk itu untuk apa tu atas sini mungkin kita boleh mungkin gunakan apa tu soalan open ended lah open ended mean tak kita tak pergi apa value student pilih value then dia akan solvekan masalah tu dia akan solvekan ikut value yang dia tentukan dan kalau katakan uh, value tu memang sama antara dua pelajar kan dan value tu agak macam unik 
dan kalau kita fikir logically memang tak mungkin samalah dan kalau tengok jalan kerja pun sama, I think itu peringkat pensyarah bolehlah ambil tindakan saya rasa buat peringkat kita lah walaupun ini sebelah ada lagi satu polisi yang clear tentang ini saya rasa kita boleh peringkat pensyarah dia boleh hukuman terhadap pelajar lah mungkin kurangkan mereka ke apa jadi saya rasa itu penting. Yang kedua saya rasa kita kena warning pelajar kalau dapati mereka meniru kita akan bagi hukuman lah itu saya rasa one of the way tak mungkin lepas ni dia akan cuba kan dia apa tu ubah ayat ke apa ke tapi i think kalau macam essay tu mungkin mudah untuk dia tiru, dia kita kesankan sebab mungkin ayat dia sama dia tiru bulat-bulat tapi kalau macam penyeraan tu saya rasa the only way is one of the ways lah not the only way ialah kita uh, buat open ended for that pelajar dia boleh lah uh, pilih mungkin value sekian-sekian dan dia solve kan uh, itulah mungkin faham eh masuk saya okey itulah saya punya maklum balas Itulah faham kan maksudnya kerja kita lebih sikit lah kena tengok betul-betul kan jawapan student tu from one another mungkin yalah, kalau dapat tangkap, tangkap lah kan kalau tak dapat tangkap, dia dia kena tangkap lah kat akhirat nanti tu je lah kita boleh beritahu <laughs> uh, ok uh, yang lain-lain kalau ada sharing lagi Assalamualaikum Yes, yes. The the door is it? Yes, yes. You said uh, that uh, there is there is feedback on that uh, something can in my mind. I may be wrong. Actually, this complex engineering problem we apply in uh, year three and year four, or it is from first year to final year. Uh, okay. It, again, it depends on the apa uh, nama and the policy of the our faculty. Yeah. But for us, okay. For us, for me. I would suggest let's start with on the later years lah, year three and year four. Okay. You want if that's you want good. to start, ha. that's good. Okay, so in that sense, there is one question is uh, the idea is coming in my mind to make it a qualitative. That what we do in the suppose first year we have two semester, second year we had two semester. Either I have four four things to do. One is that we select any subject, and we uh, ask a student that uh, you go for the collection of data in multiple terms collection of the data in the first first phase we ask them to multiple so that the student know how to collect how should be the extract the true data means the whatever the useful is there all yeah. that is regarding the data yeah. number two different yeah. in the second semester on the first semester also we do you we ask them to choose the tool and technique to yeah. analyze it yeah so that they go yeah. for the review so they will know yeah. how to review it and how to select the tool and technique which yeah. is more applicable is that yeah. and third thing we go for the analysis now we ask them to okay you analyze it yeah okay so that is yeah. the third phase number fourth phase is that we now ask them you come up with your hypothesis engineering idea engineer idea that, that what should can be the good solution suppose you have done in a multiple way are you are thinking there is another way also there whether it is right or wrong just we get a, what we call brainstorming from the students so in this two semesters or four semester they will be completely trained that how they can take their uh, any even fyp or whatever the subject is there so it will be qualitative this uh, came in my mind yeah, there so i wanted to share thank you Dr. yeah thank you Dr. Dr. i think it's very very good input Uh, I think uh, what the domain is that is uh, for us to give the fundamental of all these elements to the students for the first two years, lah. Yeah. maybe in the first year we are giving only one 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 question for in which involve only one conflicting of requirements only, and the other subject maybe on the depth of analysis only. Yeah. So when they come into third year or fourth year. So they are familiar with all of this method, all of this element. So when we give the students the problem which involves depth of analysis and extent of stakeholders, so they can deliver this to apa nama punya solution lah, this two solution. Okay, thank you, Dr. Dur. Good. Any other sharing? Guys? Uh, good afternoon. Okay, Kok. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just wondering if we uh, implement the uh, complex engineering problems just at year three and year four, isn't it? 
it will uh, contradict with the EAC requirement because we have to look at the uh, the CLO PLO analysis, CLO PLO uh, mapping, and uh, we know that from PLO one to PLO seven, it is the complex complex engineering problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, how how could we do it just in uh, year three and year four? Yeah. Because, uh, the the courses in year one and year two also uh, it has been mapped to PLO one to seven. Yeah. Right, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I agree, Dr. Kok. I agree. That's why when the first uh, when I start my presentation, I mean, if you grab what I meant, basically all of the course gonna deliver complex. Otherwise, otherwise, uh, we apa nama kita punya program will uh, fall into broadly defined because we do not deliver complex. Yeah, but as far as AC is concerned, okay, for now, for now, it is to provide awareness dulu. Provide awareness of complex dulu, complex in problem dulu. Because we are not familiar with this complex thing. Okay, uh, that's why here, over here, in my last parts of the slides, kat sini, we are emphasizing, or the AAC is emphasizing on IDP, XYP, industry trading, and maybe laboratory for engineering activities. They are looking on these courses for implementation of complex dulu. But if you can top this up with other courses from year three and year four, it's even better. But I mean, way forward, by the end of, I don't know, at the end of the day or whatever, or in three or four years, all of the courses, like Dr. Cox said, has to deliver complex any problem. I agree with Dr. Cox actually. But then, to start with, okay, Dr. Kok, I think, let's start with, I mean, it's not wrong for you or for any one of us who are teaching in year one and year two to start with complex problem. It's not wrong. Even it is good, it's better, okay? But uh, just be careful, it's not so complex because they are still in year one and they're still in year two and the subjects might be fundamental. So the most important thing is the fundamental knowledge or the fundamental understanding, okay? So maybe the complex problem is to enhance the fundamental, then it's good, it's good. What I am afraid of is we want to make, we want to deliver complex in the problem to the students in those first and second years, okay? But for them to, 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 to solve the complex problem, then they miss something on the fundamental side of the engineering, electrical engineering, kan? Kita takut macam tu saja. But way forward, betul Dr. Kok, kita kena buat semua. Uh, but, as, but as of now, even the feedback from Prof Wong and also Prof Zainal Abid, uh, kita nak put awareness dulu and these are the courses plus any other courses lah. Any other courses tu, I think maybe the most suitable courses, one or two courses, a uh, few courses from U3 and U4 and then kalau nak top up dengan U1 and U2, then it's good lah. Tetap. Okay? But of course, tetap, semua sepatutnya kena complex. That's why, kalau boleh, okay, try lah, try, try this out, try this out. I mean, uh, you dapat benda ni, kan, uh, ada benda ni, isikan benda ni sikit, kan, then try this out, what, try, what, give one, apa nama, uh, segment, lepas tu, just try to, you know, put some justification on what you have done, you kata ada WP1, WP3, WP4, kenapa ada justification sikit, plus mungkin ada satu, kita ambil contoh satu dua uh, answer script yang student dah bagi tu dekat situ kita bulatkan di CWP2, WP4 ke apa benda ke atau uh, uh, minta student tu sendiri uh, bagi tahu kat mana WP2, WP3, WP4 dengan kita terangkan kepada student Okay, just try this out, try mula-mula memang betul tak betul tergelincir sikit tu biasa lah kan macam baby nak jalan lah kan bangun jalan kaki jatuh, nanti sikit jatuh lama-lama kita berjalan lah kalau, tapi kalau kita tak try this out sampai bila memang Tak tahu. So just try this out, guys. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think I agree with uh, Dr. Salfi. Uh, but anyhow, I think we can uh, come up with one uh, template, especially for assignment and projects, right? For all courses that uh, can represent the, uh, the the practice of the CEP. All right. Thank you. Sure, Kok. Sure, sure, sure. Very good. And also, uh, just to share to share with you guys. 
Okay, we have this WP. Okay, now one question which is uh, a bit uh, advanced question. Okay, how how deep is WP two? How deep is WP three? How deep is the WP four? How deep is the WP five? Okay, so these are the question that might arise. So at the moment, and it is discussed with also our external examiners. We do not need to. Uh, go into that level yet, okay? Because contoh eh WP2 eh range of conflicting requirements. Perhaps kita ada rubik WP2 rubik uh, scale one only two re conflicting requirement or one conflicting requirement ada dua. Uh, scale number two rubik scale ada three re conflicting requirement. Lepas tu lagi berat ada five conflicting requirements. Ah uh, up to that level tau the deep of the WP2 the depth of the WP2. So we are not going to that level yet. For now. According to EAC and also the external examiners themselves, it is for the awareness dulu. And it's not just awareness to, for us to try out. Try this out. Okay, buat lah. Buat, buat. Ha. And? Assalamualaikum. Dr. Sofi, saya nak tanya sikit. Okay. Ha, ni, hmm. Berkenaan dengan uh, bila kita tengok balik kan uh, Nampaklah dia punya kesinambungan daripada kita punya RPP tu Kita tengok kepada kita punya CLO Saja nak double check so, saya, saya takut salah faham So dekat kita punya CLO tu kita akan nampak kita punya LOD LOD tu pun refer pada PLO kita Dan daripada PLO kita kita ada level of cognitive lah Ataupun psychomotor ataupun effective tu So bila yang norms yang kita buat sekarang adalah based on this Kita akan cuba uh, tengok rubrik permakah uh, rubrik for that each level of that supaya kita boleh map dan kita buat pemakahan dalam kita punya ni lah subjek kita bila kita embed uh, WP dengan EA ni based on PLO yang mana cover tu based on kita punya sejak CLO tu so adakah setakat hari ni kan uh, kita akan pemakahan tu dia tak tak, tak, nak, tak, tak tengok lagi lah uh, dia uh, hanya nak tengok pelaksanaan tu saja untuk yang WP dengan EA tu uh, soalan pertama yang kedua, saya dimaklumkan kan uh, untuk setiap subjek dalam uh, yang ketua program dah map semua tu uh, Dia dah sebenarnya dah setiap subjek tu dulu ada satu template yang dia dah tulis dah subjek-subjek sekian-sekian akan cover W, W, WP dengan EA tu Adakah uh, itu akan dirombak? Uh, yang kedua, itu saja. Terima kasih okay, Baik, terima kasih Dr. Hedawati uh, Assessment is according to PO untuk WP ni is pelaksanaan Okay, for pelaksanaan, maksudnya The same assignment You will be using the same rubric for assessment But in that assignment, just state which uh, part is WP2 uh, Which is, uh, apa nama, range of the requirement Which part is WP3, depth of analysis But the marks for that analysis Is based on the rubrics lah Okay, CO lah. Okay, so complex problem is the pelaksanaan implementation. Uh, then apa nama tadi? Okay, tadi syllabus. Uh, okay, I pun notice lah benda ni. Few syllabus kita dah fix. Sebagai contoh syllabus control system theory contohnya. Eh, kita tengok tadi uh, ada tak? Sebenarnya saya minta saya punya team di move untuk BEV. Ah, dekat bawah ni. Ada additional information ni. Ha, ada tulis uh, WP1, WP2, WP8. Eh WP8 tak ada. WP7 contoh. Ha, dah ada dah siap-siap. For me, <laughs> okay, untuk BEV, saya minta KPP keluarkan benda ni. Cukuplah kita tulis itu, uh, sepatutnya tulis lah mungkin this apa nama subject can apa nama be deliver complex new problem. Actually semua subjek pun kena deliver complex new problem kan yang mana ada PO1 sampai PO5. Tak ada tulis pun tak apa. Sebab apa saya remove? Sebab saya nak dia dynamic. Semester ni kemungkinan Dr. Noh Hafizah jadi apa nama uh, penyelaras. Dia buat WP1, 2 dan 3. Semester depan pula kemungkinan uh, Dr. Syahril jadi penyelaras. Dia nak buat WP1, WP4, WP8. Eh WP6 contohnya. Uh, so dia dah berubah. Tapi kalau kita letak dalam syllabus, then It is not dynamic lah. Maksudnya WP1, WP2 dan WP6. Ah setiap masa setiap semester itu jelah sebab syllabus kita macam tu. Dia tak dynamic. But then the one good thing about not dynamic is control. 
easy to control sebab benda tu tak ada ni kan so kenalah kita nak control so benda yang sama je kan uh, cuba je It depend on the macam mana polisi uh, uh, kita punya faculty okay uh, to be honest with you guys untuk BEV saya remove saya remove sebab apa saya nak beri dynamic contoh isi uh, isi tu tahun satu kan okay, contohnya power quality lah dia ada WP1 ataupun EA1 ke kan, activities kan, okay, WP1, 2 dan 5 kan, contohnya kan, uh, Fatih buat semester ni, semester depan kemungkinan apa nama Dr. Wahyu, dia nak ubah benda lain, uh, so dia boleh ubah, dan good thing about dynamic ni juga, uh, coordinator tu boleh suggest, okay, next year buat kompleks yang map kepada ada problem, uh, maksudnya bukan WP1, 2 dan 7, mungkin WP2, 1, 2 dan 8. So ada option tu untuk CQI 03 nanti cadangan. Atau CQI 01 cadangan untuk new coordinator. Jadi kalau kita benda tu kita dah fix, rigid then nak buat macam mana tak boleh nak ubah lah kan. Uh, tapi easy to control lah. Just buat one good thing about the dynamic. Sebab tu dalam apa nama, dalam macam dalam IDP, dalam PSM bila kita fixkan benda ni, IDP contohnya WP1, 2, 3 dan 5 seolah-olah so, macam semua projek kena buat WP1, 2, 3 dan 5 tapi in reality, nature of the project tu mungkin tak sama kan so macam nak paksa dia orang bising lah advisor ke apa benda semua kan but one good thing is easy for the community, committee untuk control semuanya buat 1, 2 dan 5, 1, 2 dan 5 ha, semua senang, ha, senang dia nak control ha, itulah so again depend on the I would say uh, head of program dan juga di Deputy Dean lah kan, macam mana nak gayakan benda ni mungkin dengan Dean juga sama ada nak buat benda dynamic pun ataupun rigid dengan dia uh. so saya tak tahu untuk Terda sama ada benda ni akan ada nak ubah ke tak lagi tapi untuk uh, apa nama BTV saya cakap kita removekan benda tu semua so kita tak rigid kita ubah Terima kasih Sama Assalamualaikum Dr. Sofi. Ya Cik. Ya Cik. Ha. Apa ni nak tanya sikit lah. Uh, last time waktu IDP eh. Hmm. Uh, kita ada uh, as for now yang kita tengok uh, implementation CEP tu pada IDP final year kan. Hmm. Uh, sebelum ni uh, macam kursus CNI eh. Dia pun banyak hmm. juga komponen-komponen CEP ni eh. Hmm. Uh, tadi ada tak ditekankan untuk CNI sebab dia, supaya banyak ada contribution sikit lah subjek CNI tu nampak macam macam dapat nampak macam terasing kan tapi sebenarnya, boleh, boleh. Uh, sebenarnya, sebenarnya dalam CEP dia banyak konten dia tu kan hmm. boleh boleh apa nama dalam CNI sebab apa nama we are using this model accumulated model all courses contribute to PO measurements so maksudnya CNI pun boleh, apa nama, agent of society pun boleh tak ada masalah, even agent of society tu boleh jadi kompleks, kita bagi dia problem, kita minta ada interview dengan uh, semua engineer kan, macam Dr. Najib bakal engineer kan, dah pergi CSI kan kita minta interview student, semua boleh, bukan call courses je tapi, ingat, tapi ingat, kena yang ada PO 1 sehingga 5 uh, kalau subjek tu tak ada we are not PO1 to PO5 dia cuma ada 6 7 and 9 tak boleh ya ya ni 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 dia punya orang kata syarat sah kalau tak tak sah ni <laughs> so, so, so maknanya subjek-subjek macam CNI engineering society tu kan kita kena align baliklah supaya dia tu uh, apa kereta yang 1 uh, sampai 5 ni yes uh. kalau kita target those subjects uh. untuk untuk buat kompleks, make sure the subject tu kena ada minimum satu lah, salah satu daripada satu minimum ni mm-hmm. macam tu lah ah, contoh dia nak buat engineering activities kan ok, tapi dia tak ada PO10 so next time, buat revision, subject CNI, subject lab, map dengan PO10 so that those subjects boleh deliver engineering activities macam tu okay. So kalau kita apa concentrate pada subjek-subjek yang macam tu aja sebab hmm. saya rasa dia punya content kop CEP tu lagi banyak daripada lagi lagi lagi, lagi senang kita kaitlah daripada dalam kursus-kursus engineering kan. Hmm. Uh, 
susu-susu engineering ni uh, ada yang boleh ada yang tak boleh kan tapi portion untuk ke, apa CNI uh, engineering society kat situ CEP punya komponen banyak boleh apply saya setuju lah maksudnya uh, ada subjek yang bukan nak kata ada yang boleh yang tak boleh ada yang senang ada yang tak apa nak senang lah kan betul, <laughs> ha. Ha. mungkin for now fokus on subjek yang senang dulu ke nak nak kita nak orang kata realize benda ni kan yes ha. yes betul yes, yes. lah I mean setuju lah but then macam kita PBL lah macam PBL ok uh, eh dah program kena pilih subjek apa nak PBL next semester so might start dengan subjek apa nak deliver complex next semester. Ha, pilih lah subjek ni, subjek ni dulu. Maksudnya kita kita pause dulu, kita ni buat sikit complex. Ha, then lepas tu kemungkinan next semester pula subjek lain pula kita gilirkan ke macam tu lah. And so in the end of the day, semua subjek kena buat macam tu. Semua subjek kena buat jugalah. Eh. Ha, sikit-sikit lah, sikit-sikit lah. Tak nak lah. <laughs> Kita kalau tak buat semua nanti macam kata doktor kok lah kan bila doktor kok kata macam tu kita susah memang betul lah doktor kok kata tadi semua saja kena betulnya. Alright alright alright. Okay terima kasih. Okay sama. Um, okay hadirin memandangkan masa kita pun dah melebihi jam 12 jadi saya buka untuk soalan terakhir sebelum kita akhiri sesi kita pada hari ini. Kita buka soalan terakhir satu je lagi soalan. Kalau ada, kalau tak ada kita boleh tamatkan sesi kita. Dah minta sharekan apa PowerPoint dan semua bahan-bahan uh, yang present hari ni pada semua. Eh, boleh boleh insya-Allah. Nanti semua ni KTOT eh, kan? nanti semua kita boleh train kawan-kawan kita lah masing-masing. <laughs> Okey baik, uh, kita akan dapatkan bahan-bahan yang di-share tadi dan uh, kami di JKPNP akan uh, share dengan para peserta sekalian. InsyaAllah, okay. insyaAllah. Uh, tak ada soalan. Okey, so sekali lagi kami ucapkan terima kasih kepada Prof. IR Dr. Salfi di atas perkongsian mengenai konsep CEP yang begitu menyeluruh. Okey, so, jadi sekarang ni kita pun dah dapat beza lah apa itu WK, apa itu WP dan bila nak apply dia kan. So dulu kita selalu fikir nak apply masa final ke kan. Uh, nak isi dekat dalam borang tu so kita tahulah so bila, bila masa kita nak apply okay? So dia harap perkongsian ni dapat memberi manfaat kepada para peserta Terutamanya dalam mengaplikasikan uh, apa Complex engineering problem ni dalam proses pengajaran dan pembelajaran okay. Jadi um, sekali lagi kami ucapkan terima kasih kepada para peserta Kerana meluangkan masa bersama-sama kami pada sesi pagi ini Dan terima kasih kepada penceramah Sekian, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh Thanks guys Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh uh, Cuk, saya terlupa um, Sila isikan link untuk kehadiran untuk sesi hari ini ya uh, Link kehadiran kami ada letak di uh, bahagian chat Okay, uh, okay. dan to all Muslims uh, Kita tangguh dengan tasbih kafal dan suratul as Suratul as Okay guys, thank you Okay, terima kasih semua. Terima kasih Dr. Sofi. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Salam sejahtera. Terima kasih banyak.